Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Beer is about drinkability. Doesn't oh, matter yeah. the style. You guys are like walking beer Wikipedia. And that's the first time that you've ever accepted me as a person. Or you have a fermentation in your gut. Yeah. I'm jet propelled at all times. <laughs> How many guys do you think that you have the privilege to slap? Somebody who's never tasted a commercial example. And this is how you know everything about this beer? Please, you don't. I think you know, it's bullshit. The... <laughs> I think it's bullshit, too. Wow. Are you guys going to arm wrestle? No. no. We're going to teabag fight. Yeah. <laughs> you heard of Junkyard Wars? Can I get another high five, Beavis? <laughs> <laughs> now, live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers. Craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is the session. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session. I'm your host today, Justin Crosley, joined by Jason J.P. Petros. Hi. Teresa Pasuti. Hello. Kim Shemke. Hi. Yay. And Beardy. Yay. Also, yay. Yeah. Got lower. Uh, Bevo's here, too, by the way. Hello, would you get? Double yay. Yeah. As low as you can get. That's right. Welcome to the studio, everybody. We've got an exciting show planned for you today. East Brothers Beer Company. What is it? Plural? East Brother? East Brother. Singular. And they're from Richmond, California, which will be fun to talk about. Uh, those of you who know anything about the Bay Area know that uh, Richmond, California, has a, a unique and checkered history. That's true. And, uh, it's, That's true. It's evolving as a city, and I'm excited yeah. to learn about that. That's true. Uh, and I've known a couple of breweries that were going to open there and didn't to try to get in on this evolution of uh, Richmond. So it'll be excited to talk to East Brother Beer Company about that. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a few things to cover. Uh, we just got back a couple a couple of us, uh, Beardy and yes. myself and Kim Shimke from Firestone Walker Brewing Company. Woo-hoo. We spent a couple days there this weekend resurrecting my favorite beer ever. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. Pale 31. Yes. Is that like your life dream? You just achieved it? I mean, kind of. Yeah. I... Uh, yeah, actually, I'm done. But <laughs> now, that you, now that you mention it, good luck tonight, guys. I'm JP, going home. Up. Are you ready for it to die again? <laughs> Right. Because this uh, isn't a long term thing. You're right. It's a seasonal thing. And it's also not exactly the beer. But the the brief history is that uh the brewmaster down there, Matt Brennelson, called me uh, a a couple of months ago and said, Hey, I've been looking for an excuse to bring back Pill Thirty One and and who better to do it with than the Brewing Network? Because you guys both loved it the most and gave us the most shit yes. when uh, they got rid of it. And so said, Would you like to come do that? And we're gonna put it in our mixed pack. It's what they call a treasure beer in their mix pack. Plus experimental brewing declined. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, So they are putting the Brewing Network branding all over it. It's got a hop grenade on it. Um, Yeah, I saw that. I was really disappointed I couldn't make it work because that would have been been a lot of fun. It sounds like it would have been a a really good time. It was fun. I I took a bunch of video, which I'll work on. I've got got Homebrew Con this week, so I'll do my best to get that put together as quickly as possible. But we did some video, and couple of 
minor changes. Uh, Tasty mm-hmm. had some input. It was really important to me and Matt both that Tasty would have some input. So uh, he helped with the with the grain bill a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to reveal everything now. I'll wait till like the beers in people's hands. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe we can have Matt on to talk about the changes. Yeah, we should do a, t- uh, a tasting and discuss all that for sure. But we just did some minor changes to the malt bill, and then. Um, we thought we might do some semi major changes to the hops, but Matt right. like lined them all out on a table for us, like each on their own piece of paper, and you get to smell each one. And we ended yeah. up pretty darn close to like the original one. Yeah, we added a, just a little bit. We altered it, right. um, and and we we added um, a, a one. Couple, uh, we might yeah, not we have got, added one. We might have subtracted one. We, so we, we substituted one, I think, is okay. what ended up happening. We did. And before they were all laid out on the table, just going down the list, it was a hop that I was pretty dead set against adding. But then the benefit of being able to smell that thing, it smelt so great. It's like, yeah, We can sure. name this. What was the hop? That you, Chinook. The Chinook. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm nice. not a big Chinook fan, but mm, that yeah. Chinook that they had there. Well, Chinook is really a big nice. fan of you. And so I feel like <laughs> you being open to that was good. Yeah. It, it yeah. brought it and I accepted its, bringing? its aromas yeah. and bringing. And, right. and I am a Chinook fan, but not necessarily in my beloved Pale 31. So right. I didn't go in going like, oh, I really like Chinook. Let's make that the difference. But we all went down the line, and everyone just kept going back to this Chinook. Yeah. So that was kind of our major alteration with the hops, and we'll talk more about that. Well, I, uh, I think what's cool about that little anecdote is is hop selection really matters. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. everybody knows that Firestone has the best, well, not the best, but they have some of the world's top hops, right? Yeah. But you don't really think about that until, until stories like like this kind of come out where oh Chinook nobody's really stoked on Chinook but this Chinook this is the Chinook to be stoked on that's kind of cool every one of us yeah. Matt had the same opinion their operations guy came in there and he yeah. had the same opinion. we all just kept going back to this hop um, so it's still a big blend and what we're talking about here by the way is in the dry hopping the mm. I believe we kept the kettle hops exactly the same as Pill Thirty One oh, cool. I, I don't we think did. we touched yeah. it yeah yeah after you were all done and 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 it was all racked off into the fermenter did everybody just kiss like a group kiss that happened <laughs> that would have been tight off camera yeah. oh. Oh, okay. But it happened. It right. was a little wet and gross. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it happened. For See, sure. I would have been dry, like dry mouth, like dry, like I am right now. Chimkey was like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't surprise Which you. Which was disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. I well. my chapstick. <laughs> Today my Carmex. Right. Okay, but well. she was lingering too long, though. It was a dry <laughs> lingering. She would, too. Like yeah. Meaning we all left, and she's just still there moving her tongue around in the air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was good, right, guys? Yeah. Am I doing guys? this right? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's a three-inch butterfly port. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Your lips are cold. Uh, so it was fun, and we'll have more reporting on that. It's going to be available uh, pretty soon, as you can imagine. It doesn't, sure, you know, right? They're not going to sit on a beer like that. It's probably already done for a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it could be. We're going to have some here in kegs, both at the uh, the Hop Grenade in Concord and the Hop Grenade in Fort Collins, and then we'll let you know it's going to be released nationwide in their mixed pack. So uh, all of you listeners, I, I well, I should say most of you, I guess, are going to yeah. get to try the beer if you go seek out the Firestone Walker mixed pack. That would be yeah. cool, man. Uh, so when Firestone Walker goes to do a one-off like that, how much beer are we talking here? Like, how many barrels? Do you know? So we brewed on the... 100 billion. We did, we did a double batch on the 85 barrel system that day. Correct. And then I was told they'll then do a 200 barrel batch, which they will blend. I oh think, wow! That they'll that they'll end up, uh, bl- uh, or maybe maybe they'll do another one on the small system, <laughs> the small system, the <laughs> right. eighty five barrel. I, I'm not clear on that. I do know that yes, we brewed a double batch, and then they're going to brew another one before it's released. And I think they right. they tend to kind of put them together. Um, and that way, if they because it's a bunch like because they're letting us make these decisions, and and they do this with others too, I think they feel like we don't anticipate anything going wrong, but just in case, we're gonna want to brew another batch and make some tweaks. Yeah, so you've got that buffer, you know. So if this batch really sucks or it's really amazing, you know, yeah. they could bring the amazing down to just like. Pretty amazing. Because we're talking about a massive amount of beer here, right? Yeah, like this is you, you don't get to, there's no dumping this beer. Yeah, I think that's like a quarter of the year for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> like that was January yeah. to to March. In the yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> In one shot. 
<laughs> but we spent the whole day there. We got to push some buttons. Uh, we got to yeah. throw oh, some. Um, we got to throw some hops in. Um, Shimki did some work with chemicals. Yeah, they gave me the dangerous powders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cool. The one person with asthma had the powders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Both times, mind you. That was an accident. Yeah. Warren had the eye goggles. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Asthma. Asthma holic over yeah. here had the chemicals. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It was a long day too. I mean, we started pretty close to nine, and it went what about six? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good long brew day. And it's cool because so we would do a few things and then we would just continue the tour. And the tour, it's a campus now. So the tour is massive. Like it's not just the brewery. Then you go up on top of the two different fermenter farms. Um, we got to go up on the really high ones too, which was scary and awesome. Feet up. Yeah, wow. that was really cool. And then, you know, then you, you can go through the bottling line and the canning line and the, and, and so we would do a few things and then go on a tour and then do a few things and then continue the tour and then stop for lunch and then continue the tour. And I video, I videoed like the whole tour. So I'll, I'll be doing my best to show y'all what we're talking about here. You can pay attention to our YouTube page. I'm not saying it's going to be some like amazing cinematic experience but it will at least be our experience oh it's not going to be an imax that's uh not yet <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> 4k hd yeah. yeah i mean i could have shot in 4k but i didn't i don't know why <laughs> i mean you need a giant memory card I would imagine. Yeah, right. uh so anyway uh, uh it, it was a lot of, it was a good time and then uh beardy and i stayed up till 4 30 morning we got we got everyone too drunk yeah I believe that Eric here um, ended up uh, throwing up in Matt's, in Matt's yard. Uh, I find, oh, he missed telling me that on the ride back. Oh, uh, did he now? He did. Yeah. I think I eventually put Matt to bed. I tucked him in. Mm-hmm. I was like, you have to stop did being you, polite. Do not stay. Do not try to keep up with me and Beardy. Did you kiss him on the forehead? I too? gave him a little kiss. <laughs> yeah. I, In fact, even the night before, I had to send uh, his wife to bed as mm-hmm. well because they're so polite. And, and Beardy and I are ridiculous. So mm-hmm. I have... I've learned to just be like, I think I even said it to you, Teresa, the first time you hung out with us. I've learned to just be like, listen, don't be polite around us. When right. you're ready for bed, go to bed. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. if you're going to wait for us to go to bed, it never happens. That's right. I like it when couples are, so. are, are, are up front with other people like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. Beardy and I are that way. <laughs> and so, yeah, finally, at I don't know what time, you know, we're playing bocce ball in Matt's backyard until the wee hours. And I'm just like, Matt, you need to go, <laughs> go yeah. to bed. And then he had one more beer. Yeah, of course. And then he went to bed. He's a professional. Yeah, I mean, right. come on. Maybe he was just worried about his stuff. You know? Yeah, he's watching his fair. family yeah. and his sure. stuff. That's, That's a good right. point. Yeah, they, you guys are, it, or you guys were all just playing like go to bed chicken. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Who's going to go to bed first? But see, that's what I'm saying. Terrible game to play <laughs> with us. <laughs> it's just, just a terrible game. Up. And not because of any effort, because we're idiots. Yep. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, I'm st- I'm wide awake. There's another beer in the fridge. <laughs> we're why, not out. Why would I go to bed? Yeah. It's just a dumb game. The to sun's play not with. up yet. Yeah. It's not, it's not even a challenge. It's just my life. Um, but great time. Yes. Great time. And then Beardy and I went on a wine tasting date uh, the next day. Oh, that's cute. And we did some wine tasting all afternoon. We invited Kim Shimke and Eric, but they're fucking lame. And I don't know, did something else. So Here's yeah. how this went. The day before, Justin goes, I want to go like, you know, um, around some, not hopping or anything, but like three wineries. We're like, that is winery hopping. If it you're is, going to I three in a day. So. No, we went to, we ended up going that's, to four. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> we're that's all they were walking distance from each other. Correct. Yeah. We're all waiting for the day to start. And poor Eric was, like, at home having breakfast with Matt, who's probably both of them are like, well, do we wait on these guys? Long story short, you guys got up at, like, maybe noon? Uh, maybe, maybe, like, 11. Yeah, yeah, 11. No, it was not 11. No, I think we got up at 11. Yeah. Well, maybe we 11. Moving moving to maybe yeah. noon. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's an hour. We yeah. got we up at 11, rubbed this, one out. And Eric then we went to a brewery, and then we went drinking at yeah. another bar. So it was great. We had our own good time. But then we were wine tasting. At that point, you could have done part two, like, wine tasting. It was a wine day. <laughs> you made it a wine day. We got private tours of like four different wineries. Yeah. And a distillery. That? We a Because we had yeah. met a, a, a guy who worked at the winery the night before, and he gave us his card, said, come on by. Went and hung out with him first, and then he took us he to all the around. other ones. Yeah. And we got a great experience. Yeah. So that was fun, too. The whole weekend was a good time, and but most importantly... I'm really proud. You're gonna wait to wait to all you listeners. Wait to see the logo. Wait to see the bottle. It's yeah. the coolest thing. It's it's the Brewing Network all over it. It's not subtle. <laughs> it, it's not like one of those collabs where they're like also with the Brewing Network. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like our shit all over it, which I'm really proud of. Yeah. It's cool. 
So we'll let you know when that's available, and we'll do some parties here at the Hop Grenades in, in here in, in Colorado. Love it. All right. This episode and every session that we do is brought to you by More Beer. Go to morebeer.com and check them out right now. they got everything you need and, uh, and more, really. They have, they have all the things. Go to morebeer.com. Let's do some announcements. Announcements brought to you today by Drake's Brewing Company. Go to drinkdrakes.com and check it out. And their next big event, if you want to go to the bar and they're doing a brewer versus brewer dinner, it's Drake's versus Bike Dog up there in Sacramento. Closer to you, Teresa. Oh, yeah. You can get to get to that. If you want details, you can go over to drinkdrakes.com and click on their events tab and check it out. So let's see. What do we have going on? BNA 14 tickets are on sale right now. That's happening in less than a week. It's happening on Saturday. What do you? Don't worry about Bevo. You don't have anything to do except for all the raffle tickets and greeting all the yeah. people and checking <laughs> yeah. everybody in, doing all the work all for the your anniversary and, yeah. party. Yeah, and you have uh, five days. <laughs> all the all the autographs are going to need to, and it better be all right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Go to thebrewingnetwork.com dot com and click on the BNA fourteen. It's right there on the events page. It's a big old picture, and uh, get your tickets now. There, it's only thirty five bucks, and, and then it's all the craft beer you can drink. I was looking at the beer list today. It's pretty damn good. Um, Exhibit A out of Boston is getting some beer there. They're supposed to be like the big thing out there right now. Trillium's got some beer there. We're bringing out some Heretic Brewing for you. I think we're going to have some Plan B there. We had them on the show. Remember how Remember how good the Plan B beer was and how much fun we had talking to them? Yeah. They're that like random little farm brewery out there. Oh, that's in Pennsylvania, in right? In fact, it's called Plan B Farm Brewery. No, New York somewhere. New York, I think. okay. Yeah. Real New York? Yeah. I think, B-E-E because they do like their own honey yeah, Crap. yeah, yeah. I think we got some of their beer. I'll I'll publish the. I'm just waiting on the final list from the distributor, and I'll publish that this week. Uh, so if you were like holding out to buy tickets to figure out if we had good beer, don't. We, <laughs> we have we have good beer. Who would do that? Go to thebrewingnetwork.com. Get your tickets, please. Get your VIP tickets too if you want to hang out with Bevo and I and the boys from Melvin and more <laughs> beer uh, for an extra hour and a little private Q and A session. You can do that as well. Um, also, uh, we're giving away at this party the more beer, the official Brewing Network more beer brewing sculpture. So if you buy your ticket, you get raffle tickets. Then you can buy extra raffle tickets, and one of you is going to take home the award-winning system that Jamil brewed all of the Brewing Classic Styles beers on. That's right. Whether you like it or not, you're going to take it home. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, don't worry. We're not bringing it there. We're going to ship it to you. Um, and we might even ship you out here to brew with us first. I don't know. We're going to figure that oh. out. Yeah. But uh, just another reason to, to do that. Plus, it's the finals of our uh, collaboration competition with Melvin Brewing Company and More Beer, the Boyle Rumble, where we let uh, uh, homebrew clubs from all across the country compete. It's down to six finalists, which we will judge at the Homebrewers Conference. And then we're going to announce the winner, the winning club at BNA 14. And that winning club also wins a brand new brew sculpture and gets to brew their beer to be distributed nationwide in cans by Melvin wow. and gets to enter their beer into the Great American Beer Festival Pro-Am and get an extra party at the Great American Beer There's Festival. There's too many ands, dude. That's too much. That's you're going to yeah. right? make these winners too powerful. I hope Melvin comes through on all this. Because <laughs> they're like, sure. <laughs> they're counting on me to do it. Um, it'll it'll be a good time. So go to thebrewingnetwork.com and get your tickets. What the fuck else do you have to do on a Saturday after the Homebrews Conference? A throw up in Matt's yard, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's right. All right. If you want to support the BN in other ways, do your Amazon shopping. Just click the Amazon link on our homepage. Um, it'll take you to uh, a page where there's a banner. If you can't see the banner, take off your ad blocker because your ad blocker is blocking the banner. And once you click the banner once, you can then just save it as a bookmark, and then you can put your ad blocker back on and just go to your Amazon bookmark. It's a great way to support us by doing all your Amazon shopping. You can also subscribe and join the BN Army for as little as 2 bucks a month. You're into the More Beer monthly donation giveaway where we give you 100 bucks, chance to win 100 bucks to spend at More Beer. And it's just a, it's a great way to support us, and, and some of you do that. Some of you. The rest of you should, too. Uh, okay, what else? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Sure. All right. What, Why beer, not? Did, what beer did you get, JP? Um, I got the Social Kitchen uh, Amber Lager, I believe. Mm-hmm. I got the our guest oh. East Brother Beer Vienna Lager. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Good. I love it. I love a good Vienna Lager. It's got that. It's hard to find. It's got that toffee, slightly roasty sweetness without being sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cracker bready finish, maybe. 
I think you should get one at the break. I'm going. I'm going to. For I'm sure. recommending that. It's the r- the rare time that I can find two amber loggers on at the same time. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to do both. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a cause for celebration. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Did, are, you, are you having it? I I <laughs> didn't realize that it was there. Huh. I was in a rush and I was like, uh, yeah, that's the one. So I have the social kitchen. As there well. we go. Did you bring Tell us your beer it. yet, Pasuti? I hear Eric keeps blowing you off. I know he totally <laughs> blew me off today. Mm. You a but dick. he apologized, so like I can't really. I guess that makes it okay. Yeah, I can't begrudge him. He's just too nice. Can I ask you another oh. question that is going to make me sound stupid as usual? I love it. Have you had dreadlocks since I met you? <laughs> wow. Can yeah. I ask that? No, they're clip- no there's been some, there's been a little bit of hair magic since last you saw me. <laughs> because how do you? Because ha- your dreadlocks look good, and how do you get dreadlocks that fast? I was like, are, did she I, get? Are they are they extensions? Were they there? And I'm an idiot. I, it's, Both? it's just it's yeah. just a little secret between me and my hair. But yeah, I mean, there was really some some magical things that happened over. The last Were they few weeks. tucked under a hat I'm, the whole time I've known you? No, I don't understand. So, so she actually I, cut I holes of, in her scalp and fed them <laughs> back so underneath remember, between her scalp and her skull. This is the best way I can explain it. You know, you watch, when you watch Austin Powers, mm-hmm. and he was caught by Doctor Evil, and he got his mojo sucked out. Yes, yeah. mm. sucked he, off. He, yeah. he, yes. He, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't quite like that. It was more like out of my <laughs> head. Like, okay. Um, I, I've been trying to get my mojo back. So. And you, okay. mm. I feel I like back. you have it back. I think they look amazing. I I feel got, like myself again. You, you got do? the energy. You got oh. the power coming through. Yeah. So Samson. Okay. My head is like 50% bigger than before. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you really you're really just messed with He's never met you this way. <laughs> oh, I don't. What do you mean? Yeah. All, yeah. Is, what do you right. think? Like, yeah. and Apparently, you don't seem to look my way. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is, the microphones are blocking that. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He would have believed you if you went with it. He looks, <laughs> your way, he looks your way 70% less, or 30% less than he looks at well, Warren and I. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has a deep affection for Warren. I can understand. I gave, yeah. I gave the Warren, too. <laughs> that's right. And I find it hard to look away. So Yeah. All right. But yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Well, I'm, I think they look great. I'm just checking because I was like, I don't remember this. This is not something I remember. It's it's just magic. Okay. It's all those California State Fair medals that you won. <laughs> if I ago. explain it to you, you would just be disappointed. Okay. Well, let's keep it a mystery then. Which is, I mean, pretty much just life. Wait, yeah. Just, yeah. You know, it's just if, life. if you need to explain it to your, if you need someone to explain it to you, yeah. it's going to suck. It's going to suck. You're right. Okay. All right, speaking of all those medals, though, can I go back to one little anecdote from from the Firestone weekend? No. And I've, I've, I'm sure no. I have this video too. <laughs> So you walk into Matt's office, and as you can imagine, there's awards and medals and such all over the walls, right? Imagine. As you can imagine. imagine. <laughs> and all over the tasting room, because Matt's office isn't big enough to fit all the awards. Right. Because no. right, everybody right. knows, you know, they just, they win a lot. Yeah. Uh, okay. They <laughs> sure. spill out into the hallways. Yeah. He also has a platter, like a like a serving dish, <laughs> yeah. like a platter, yeah. that is heaping tall of medals, just sitting what? in a pile yeah. on a platter. Wow. Yeah. And you oh go, like gosh. just in the corner. And Help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he exactly. Said that. When you come, because I think everyone, because I had to comment on it. I was like, well, yeah, well, I was like, Matt, you're kind of fucking ridiculous with sure. this thing. And he's like, he might as well have a sign that says, make a joke. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. In the, yeah. In the metal. And he says, I know. Do you want one? Just put one on. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I'm thinking they're all like the janky ones. Yeah. No, not at all. Like like <laughs> Kansas City yeah. State yeah. Fair winner. I mean, maybe some, but best carbonated beer. They're definitely not all like some worthless award. Yeah. He has yeah. it's uh, it's heap. It's six yeah. inches tall at least. Did you put one on? And uh, no, no, I don't want to. Uh, I'm a jinx. What am I? I'm going to be responsible for ruining Matt's career. <laughs> That's exactly I, what would happen. You're, you're already I... making him brew your favorite beer again. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Watch nobody buys it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh that's in there. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't want that one. Did yeah. you put a medal on, Justin? Because if that's what this is what's happening, <laughs> yeah. he's going to need to get another plate because I think the next medal will just slide off the pile. That's right. how heaping this thing is already. So be it. And yeah. I'm already a pain in the ass with this whole thing because my logo's going on it, right? Sure. So I had to send, uh, I had to talk to our good friend John over at the Beer Law Center about that. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, we got to do a, a licensing agreement. And I'm like, cool, yeah, just send him an easy thing. Like, hey, just, just use the logo, it's, you know. Twelve pages later. Jeez. And then I see David Walker at the Invitational, and he always comes to say hi to me because I do the uh, uh, panel for them, mm-hmm. the, uh, and he just goes, so, uh, the, is the paperwork done, Justin? Like, it's all, yeah. And I was like, God, I'm so sorry. I'm already, here you are inviting me to do this wonderful thing, and I'm yeah. like, great. Uh, have your lawyer read over this 12 pages right. and sign at the bottom. Yeah. 
It was a little awkward. I'm already a pain in the ass. <laughs> You've already cost them money. I cost mm, them money yeah. because their lawyers did. They did go back and forth. And uh, but look, it's the nature of the beast. That's what ha- it's just business. It's, it's not business. personal. Like, sorry, di- sorry, they're not familiar with the level of business that I am, David. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me educate you yeah. just a little bit, or to use your lingo, yeah. a skosh. Yeah, exactly. about what we like to call business. <laughs> That's okay? right. Okay. Yeah. Business. Yeah. By the way, here's John's card if you ever need, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a better right. lawyer. Actually, I don't know his phone number, but I can tell you his website. <laughs> yeah. And he might get back to you. I don't know. That's right. He might be tying his bow tie too tight. <laughs> I do believe John's going to be at the Homebrewers Conference. I'm looking forward to see him there. Oh, and if cool. you see him, you should go talk to him, too. Yeah. All right. Um... I don't know. Am I supposed to talk to you about something, Kim? Why are you here? I don't know. Are you? Why the fuck are you here? <laughs> yeah, after three months just one of your, nothing. Is this Kim just is one of your visits? Me. I just wanted a free beer. Oh. <laughs> you didn't get enough this weekend? <laughs> I didn't get enough this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is just one of your semi-annual visits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It used to be right. monthly. I had the energy. It's still light out. I figured, you know, take mm. advantage. Because it's going to be another six months before you see me in here. Oh, that's good. Mm. I look forward to that. Yeah. Shimki was supposed to go to the Firestone Invitational. Yeah? Yeah. So she, what hey, happened? you want to go? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. Great. You know, are you sure? I brought, oh, yeah, I got a bed for you. The whole thing. Her got boyfriend a boyfriend wouldn't let her. Fucking whole thing. And, uh, you know. The calendar shifted cool. dates on me. Okay. The so calendar I, shifted yeah. dates. So I text her like the day before we're leaving. Hey, we're meeting at Hop Grenade at this time. Yep. And she's like, tomorrow? I mean tomorrow. Yeah, you know, for that Firestone thing, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. She's like, no, that's next weekend. Ah, I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. <laughs> She's like, but I'm going to Oregon tomorrow. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to fucking tell you, because Firestone <laughs> is tomorrow. Yeah. And so she double boyfriend booked with yeah. the Firestone Invitational. Right. Well, it's weird that uh, a, a beer influencer mm. gets Does a, a major beer event incorrect. She fucked it up. Yeah. Mm. This is another thing that came up, by the way. Her influencer status. Uh huh. Sitting around the campfire with Matt getting real when drunk. When you were drunk. When, when we were, were drunk. drunk. Yeah. yeah. I didn't bring it up. Matt did. Sitting around the campfire getting drunk. Matt, uh... Matt gets bored sometimes. You can tell he starts just scrolling through his shit. And then that, he'll, he'll, the high, the high evolu- the the highly Scott, involved brain just. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You guys so, are too dull. It's so not Justin to... being boring. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not that. No. Yeah. It's, uh... it's not everybody being boring as hell. <laughs> so he comes... <laughs> so he, Him not like... wanting to be there. <laughs> right. And I think that Gemma at Firestone, their, their, social, their, their, their communications director, like, gets on him about doing more social media. Anyway. Okay. At some point, like, two in the morning, he's like, hey... Why the fuck does Kim Shimke have so many followers? <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, she has more followers than the Brewing Network has yeah. on, on Instagram. Right. And I was like, she does? Well, that doesn't sound right. What the fuck am I paying her for? How has it taken you five years to ever even... That's why I hide, because I pay you to look at these things, not me. <laughs> uh, Justin, for my, doing a great yeah, job. Yeah. For my first task, I'm going to tell you how many followers I have more than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's never going to happen. Thank you for hiring me. Yeah. <laughs> and he was really hung up on it for a second, which got me hung up on it. I was like, mm. I don't know why. And he was like, but why do you think that she's so popular? I was like... I don't fucking know. Gee, uh, thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because she's a girl. Great. Why we, do you think you're so popular? Well, I started before you guys started doing Instagram, too. I uh, started yeah. doing mine like eight years ago. You just started really posting to it when you hired me, which was five. Okay. So I have like mm-hmm. three years on you guys. Okay. Probably even like three or four. Sure. Also, I'm a singular person. Right, which means to me there should be you should have less. No, because people can build a connection with me. And she's also oh, a young, attractive idea. female. Uh, so yeah. I, okay, I didn't, that's I mean, what I I'm think. I am not trying to sexualize it, it, but. Okay, that's part of it. In, in our yeah. industry, the, if a cute, if a young, attractive female shows up, you got to admit people are more likely to hit the follow button, right? Like that, do you think that, do you think that's part of it? I mean, maybe it started that way, but I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think it stays that way because of that, because there's like all these actual like sexy women with their breasts out. Yeah. Okay. And so if someone really wanted to follow like a hot chick, that's where they're going. So well, you don't you you can follow multiple people. I don't know if you knew that about social media. Wait, it's not just oh, one account. I've only liked right. one account this entire no, time. No, you can't no, you can you have the freedom. You're doing oh. it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I mean, why I, I hired somebody else. I got yeah. married at an early age, so I thought it was just one and that's it. And by the yes. way, she was sexy girl with big boobs. Yeah. Right. So he yeah. was he was done. Yeah. I had a type. So you follow your wife on yes. Instagram and that's it. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the agreement. <clears throat> 
Monogamy. monogamy. Yeah. Well, just think <laughs> about how, many, how yeah. many young women are getting into beer, and they do they want leadership from you know some old crusty dudes or from right from or Kim. from Kim Shimke. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I I'll hear you. Take Kim all day long. I agree with you. I would also. <laughs> also, I'm pretty proud that you've gone from it was something like 732 or 36. To yeah. Over 30,000. Sure. So that's wow, quite the yeah. jump. So uh, I I'm, have. You should you. be proud. However, I'm a, a, a perfectionist. And so I feel like, I don't know. I feel well, like. Now I just want to keep the gap as big as I can. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's not a good idea. <laughs> How often are you going to check on this now every night before you go to bed? Like, I know. I write feel your like... journal, like X amount of people. I can't because uh-huh. I don't even have an account. So I don't know how to check he on this. Even, he doesn't even. He does have an account. He just clearly he doesn't, doesn't know, know how, how to, to log in. Internet. You, yeah. just, you can go on a browser and go Instagram.com slash whatever. And oh, and it'll up. tell me? Yes. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, you can fine. Look at your account I wasn't worried about it until Matt was worried about it. And I was like, well, maybe I should be Is worried Matt about it. Is Matt worried about it or was he just commenting about it? He was worried about it. He was worried. About he it. was kind of envious because he only has a few thousand. Well, because right. he never, but he yeah, also he has never a private posts. account too, doesn't he? No, no, he has like he, Firestone Walker Brewmaster. Yeah, his, but because his, his, his account, yeah. he hardly ever. Posts. No, I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they they make him post. He, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. No, I follow him. Like he's like oh. never on there. Okay, so I think that's that's also part of it. Too. I see. Yeah. You know. Anyway. But just, do, do you think that maybe you're not doing enough for the Brewing Network that <laughs> oh, we haven't that, like yeah. Yeah. that right. we haven't caught up to well, you? Yeah. I mean, you know, funny thing about that is, I feel like is... we have more content as a network than you have as a person. So are we posting enough content? Well, Kim's... I try to get content from when you guys go places and I'm not there. Right. Kim's and getting how a bulking often, right what now. What percentage online. of time do I get text mm. from all of you? Back? Well, if you start Every learning how go, to use a calendar, you could be there. <laughs> Every time I go, I try to give you a couple photos, but you hate my photos, so now I stop doing. That's it. not true. You haven't. The last time I got a lot of photos from you guys is when Garrett from Maui Brewing Company was here. Because well, you were all just like, he's wow, attract- he's a babe. He's an attractive like, guy. How many of that? How many of those made it to the account? I yeah. three because oh, okay. I did some of the stories. Were they but some of our most liked seen... photos ever? Because Garrett, <laughs> <laughs> right. it was a high. Yes, yeah. not like the highest of all time, but they were uh, pretty high. Yeah, they got a good, uh, good engagement. Yeah. Mm. But Press just making a point Garrett. that I always say, like, hey, if you guys are out, and then, like, either I get no photos or I get ones, like... This is very Brewing Network of you to pass the buck right now, by the way. Mm-hmm. What you should do, honestly, and I'm not joking, is just remind every time it's something that 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 um, everybody, I think, could use a reminder of before there is an event or if you're uh, She hard reminds up. me every time. You should uh, remind yeah. somebody else yeah. every time. And give yeah. them, like, an assignment. Like, okay, I want all three of you standing on a keg in the cooler. Uh, I used to. Doing a keg stand. I used to. <laughs> yeah. I used or, to get more direction. Then you got all comfortable. Yeah, well, especially yeah. now no, that... No, then that, I didn't get anything back because I was like, forget this. Oh. Well, no, direction, <laughs> I think, is weird. Like, I wouldn't do it either. But, like, home con- every day, twice a day... But it's Send just me everybody. And Bebo and yeah, Home you know Detroit. who sends me the most stuff? Mm. Bev. Yeah, well, then, then okay, there you go. Okay, well, there we go. That's so, well, that's fine. So, and what if are I you complaining her, about? I'm like, hey, can I get a photo of this? I will get a photo of that. Okay, well, She's we're going to be at HomebrewCon Wednesday through Sunday. So, you two mm-hmm. together. Twice a day. I'll even send you shitty photos from the airplane. Of <laughs> yeah, see? And she's hot that. mess. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes. I won't be a hot mess till the way back, probably. I'm gonna be a hot mess on the way there. Flight, though. I like how Bev just got yet another thing to do. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's her fault we don't have fifty thousand followers. Bevos or Kim's? Yeah. yeah, yeah. According to Kim, right? Both. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that what she said? That's not I don't what get, I got. That was I my takeaway. Said, I don't get enough photos. You know who sends me photos is Bev. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my fault. Okay. Well, I don't understand. Maybe this. you guys should just pass the buck right to the listeners and be like. Listen. Well, that is true. Hmm. Why have you not liked us? So, oh, I thought you meant to send us pictures. I was like, Teresa, oh, oh. stop it. Ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we did have a contest going for a little bit for listeners to send us photos <laughs> of, uh, of of new nudities. But uh, that didn't last very long. Mm. Oh yeah, mm. remember that? No, I think it was in the the garage. Where, like hot, like some listeners sent us a photo that. of like yes. his uh, hot wife yeah. naked uh, against yeah. the jeep, and they, it was they, like yeah, that was, was not thing. for social uh, media. Though. No, 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 but that, <laughs> yeah. no, but it was like ten thousand pixels by ten thousand. It like didn't fit on the screen. It was this huge thing. <laughs> Who were they called? I missed them. Uh, we yeah, we used to get uh, we used to get naked wife pics. Yeah, yeah. back then. that was not for social media. That was no, just, no. they would literally email us live on the show. Yeah. Well, Just to hear our reaction. <laughs> yes. I wonder how many of those people are still married. Good question. Uh, or alive. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Right. Good question. Right. 
Uh, all right, I got as much as fascinating as the, I'm sure this is. I got to keep us moving. Yeah. Uh, do we have a Twitter game today? We do. The Twitter game is brought to you today, believe it or not. By the American Homebrewers Association. <laughs> I believe it. And the American Homebrewers Association is an organization that celebrates the hobby of homebrewing, protects the rights of homebrewers, and provides members with world-class brewing resources. Visit homebrewersassociation.org to learn more about membership, or click the AHA link on our homepage, and you can sign up that way. Uh, and go to homebrew, uh, homebrewcon.org if you want to go join us at the Homebrewers Conference this week. What's our Twitter game? Well, you know, Justin, I've been thinking a lot about my body lately. So have I, actually. Okay. About my body? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, <clears throat> so you've been getting the pics I've sent you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my, I, my Keep gains, me present. My yeah. gains are coming along well. No, I have a skincare routine. Oh. And uh, so I've been thinking a lot about um, how to get muscular. Okay. Right, like bulky, real you know, kind of quickly because I hate going to the gym. You hate going to the gym. Mm-hmm. We talked about it all the time. Yeah. Um, so then I thought about body enhancements, like body implants. Right. God. Like I thought about mm. going to Bulgaria to get like bicep implants, like shit you can't do in America because we I have an oppressive say. government that I see. controls your body and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Get swole. I'm yeah. Down. So I, I mean, you know, I'm sorry for being strong. These are my biceps. They're not implants. They're real. Yeah. I would lie to people, right? Of course. Just to get into clubs. So I think that's what we. That's our next step on the Brewing Network is to get into body enhancements. So like I, I said, agree. bicep mm. implants in Bulgaria, going to Argentina to get modified elf ears. These are all things that like happen in other countries. So I, I want am, first th- of all, I have never agreed with you more. This is what's next for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want uh, the Twitter sphere to tell us where we should go internationally or nationally doesn't matter and what kind of modification should we get we need to enhance ourselves okay i would like to be excluded from this game <laughs> uh, okay yes that's another one okay that's Bebo two. is excluded yeah uh. bev gets 10 a year 10 deferments she's 4 f'd out of this competition it just sounds like a like a, a new uh, sequel to hostile right now <laughs> yeah. it's where i feel like this is headed but we, i'm still on board we yeah. get these enhancements we'll get more instagram followers yeah oh on okay. this note it's okay. like Ah, but reverse. Okay. You guys have 40,000 more Twitter followers than I do, so we're even. Does that make you feel better? Okay. No, okay. we started Twitter yeah. a long time ago, and 40% yeah. of them are all bots anyway, so right. it's fine. Oh, God. Aren't but Instagram bots Shinky a thing? did get us verified, yeah. or whatever that means. So you that's got a cool. blue check mark. You yeah. got a blue check mark. It's very important. Yeah. It's very makes important. It look legit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I had to like fill out an application and everything. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's weird, because they close and open those all the time. Like, Instagram verifications close now. Did you know that? Like, oh, really? Like yeah. they won't. So, like, they so won't nobody, nobody, nobody knew. It, does that mean it's worthless and no one cares? Right. Or? It will be soon because then I, I think what they're doing, what I've read, is they're they're rolling to everybody being verified, so you're an actual uh, person mm. instead of like a bot or a fake name account or something like that. That sort of makes sense to do. I never understood the other way to do it. You, like you're a celebrity or you have a certain number of followers, then you can become verified. Mm. Is, is the thinking behind it? But then who? Nobody cares. cared. Like, no one cared. Yeah, Kim cared. Right. Well, for a while. You, you care to for get you? it, and then you get it, and you're like, oh. Cool. I cared for you. Oh, for me? Yeah, I thought you it was important to you. Want to get me a blue you. check mark now? Wow. No, I was like, Kim, this is important to Kim. Now that we're Kim, verified. Oh yeah, don't I remember look at, when I texted you about this. I was like, at, oh yeah. my gosh, I'm so excited. This is so cool. We got the check mark. Yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? What blue check mark? <laughs> don't look a gift horse in the mouth. He's caring about someone. I was. Yeah. No. She was like, oh. Cool, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. For that five minutes, I really cared about you. Yeah. It's way better news than, uh, by the way, we're a robot now. Yeah. So. We yeah. got banned. Mm-hmm. We're banned yeah. for being a robot. That's right. That would be bad Locked news. Locked reported. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's the Twitter game. I like it. All right. I hope we get some good responses. Uh, yeah, me too. All right, let's do some feedback. <laughs> feedback is brought to you today by the Beer Law Center. You go to beerlawcenter.com. John's still working hard for me. He can do the same for you. Go to beerlawcenter.com. And if you're going to be at HomebrewCon, um, look him up. I think he might have a booth. I don't know. Uh, if you're going to be at HomebrewCon, just hug him. He's a big hugger. He's huggable. Actually, I don't know that. All right, Nate in Copenhagen writes in. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand this one entirely. Okay. Um, I bet you were hoping we'd be distracted by debates about whether you like a guest's beer. But it did not work, Spin Masters. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling us there's no connection between Tasty's Cancer, Jamil's Medical Corner Mystery, and the disappearance of the Adam and Eve live read. Perhaps you did get that tour of the warehouse, and these illnesses, sponsor <laughs> gap, and the imminent lawsuit are simply the natural outcome. Think about it, sheeple. The truth is out there. 
or lodge safely deep inside Jamil. So I don't, I mean, that's I, a, that's I, a I good fe- conspiracy theory. I felt theory. like it was going somewhere, but I never got the theory. That I was think just that, like, word well, like I, I understood like, okay, here's all the ways you're uh, distracting us. But was there a thing in there that we're distracting them from? That's what I don't get. Well, I thought we're distracting them from the good versus bad beer debate with. No, that's not no, what I that's got. Not what they, no, oh. I think he was saying we're using that debate to distract them from something. Like the, oh. we got the tour of the Adam and Eve warehouse and everyone's dying. I don't. I didn't understand what we're distracting and, them from. And we there. caught something from the warehouse. You didn't get it either, down. JP. No. I thought of all people, you might <laughs> read it again. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> the theory is that there's a theory. It's not that good. All right. No yeah. way. All right, all Nate. Right. Try again because I feel like you were onto something there. You definitely were on something. Nate, I don't know if you were on to it or what. But. Nate and Copenhagen, yeah. like a Sibian. All right, Chad writes in. Um, Let's see. Justin, as I hit play on your last episode, which was uh, Rip Brewing, I was a little surprised to hear the State Farm ad. Not surprised that uh, in you, uh, in the you stinking sellout way, Mm. but in the wow, the BN is really gaining the attention of mainstream companies. (laughs) Oh, man. You are so misguided. Uh, So misguided. The the Internet's a magical place. Uh, (laughs) As I'm in the process of opening up my own brewery here in Southern California, uh, it'll be Gray Wolf Brewing Company, he says, I've shopped around for general liability insurance for the brewery, and would you believe that State Farm does not offer general liability insurance to breweries? I'm not upset at you or them, but maybe you could use your extensive leverage to pressure them into supporting <laughs> small breweries. Yeah. Cheers from Chad. P.S. JP's still an asshole. Whoa! <clears throat> so, Chad, wow. I th- I did cover this. I don't mind covering it again. So the ads, are, we're sort of in this like blanket, blanket agency who will run ads in open like inventory that we have. If we have some open spots that they can put a little something. That ad we probably got like, about, like maybe $30 for or something like that. So we're not working directly with any major companies. We're working with like a broker who kind of does that if we have some extra spots to give, which we do because we're broke. So we (laughs) we just keep throwing in these extra spots. So thank you for listening to those uh, to those and they keep the show free to you. But I have no pull with State Farm. Sorry, boo. I will add this, though. Um, while they may not offer general liability insurance for breweries, and maybe they should, maybe some breweries uh, who are listening to this could could approach them and, and ask for something. Uh, I did choose State Farm as my uh, homeowner's insurance provider. In fact, they do all my insurance for one very, very specific reason. And you might remember way back in the day, my little sweetheart, my life partner, my soulmate, the Biscuit, uh-huh, yeah. a pit bull breed dog. There are many insurance companies out there, uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of landlords out there, and fuck them, too. But there's a lot of insurance companies out there who won't give you insurance oh. based on certain breeds. They have breed hmm. exclusions. And breed exclusions. And State Farm was one of those that did not have breed exclusions. And believe it or not, many I'm talking a lot of them do. We went through a few, huh. um, and I was like, no, fuck that. And, and I think State Farm was probably a little more expensive, but I was adamant that uh, that no 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 it's not a breed problem it's a it's a human there should be human restrictions i'd be fine with human restrictions <laughs> because that's the fucking problem yeah uh so i chose state farm specifically because they do not have breed restrictions so those of you uh, who care about this topic my and, and are looking for homeowners insurance that's my endorsement for State Farm. They didn't pay me for that, other than the broker who got paid. You should uh, you should send them an invoice. <laughs> yeah. I just gave you a double ad. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That stuff's important to me. I think it's ridiculous. When I was you know when I was a renter, um, there was a time when I didn't want to have ten roommates, and I thought maybe I'd try to go get my own apartment, but I couldn't with the biscuit. No one, no one, no pit bulls, no Rottweilers, whatever. And it's a bullshit excuse. There you go. Uh, she's been gone for a while. <laughs> you probably could have saved some money. No, because I mean, it's the principle of the thing. That's oh, right. I don't want to support oh, okay. a company who, that's right. who, who, who engages in that sort of behavior. I yes. see. I see. Fuck Discrimination. That. A that's principled right. customer. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. That uses past experiences <laughs> and algorithms to determine mm. the appropriate cause of action. Sure. Ah, use past experience and algorithm to place blame on the wrong entity. That's right. Not the human that owns the animal, That's but right. the animal. Right. I'm sorry. It's the human. Every fucking time. All right. You are a human. 
Yeah, and my dog is perfect. I don't know, man. My dog is fucking perfect. Why are hurt. you arguing this point with me? My dog was my dog would never hurt a fucking fly, her and there's no reason to discriminate against her breed because of that. Her well, vagina leaked. That's not a perfect dog. But it didn't hurt anything. It hurt me emotionally. I don't care. And a I got fuck. slightly aroused. And right now, I care even yeah. less about your emotions oh, than shit. I ever did before. Damn. And if she there's was perfect, n- she wouldn't have died. There's That's right. absolutely no yeah. reason insurance companies should restrict against a breed. Well, I don't know. But about the that. human. Yeah. The human. Maybe. What don't you know? Tell me what you don't fucking know about that. <laughs> I'm just cranking your hog, dude. All I right. really don't give a shit. <laughs> All dogs are retarded and they shouldn't be around. Oh, my God. Are there, are there uh, insurance agencies that give a bias towards cats? I don't know. Fuck, I'm going to look that up right now, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh now, he cares. Two, now right? he cares. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. Honestly, sudden. they should. There should be. Cats suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says Have here one. on the internet machine on Bing that there is no discrimination against breeds of cats at all, mm-hmm. and they are the best things that you should ever do. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I loved my cat, too, but... Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> me or cats? Yes. No yes. shit. <laughs> all right. All right. State Farm for the win. There That's you go. That's right. Okay. You're in good hands. Tyler writes in, um, and by the way, he it's starts like off, a good neighbor. That's <laughs> all state dummy. No, yeah. <laughs> <That's> dumb. <laughs> Well, Everyone's good. hating on me right now. <laughs> Great marketing, though. Yeah, Everyone yeah. knows I, the I difference between the slogans. You, yeah. What's yeah. progressive slogan? I'm an annoying uh, that uh, lady. Yeah. 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 Remember Flo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the progressive one. Uh, I hope they're going to do an ant flow. Like, come on, you got to, like. No, okay. No, they can't. No, they no. can't. Do, I mean, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but they just, no. One time a month, her outfit was red. No, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we had to keep no, going. No, they, they just uh, have her Warren. sister come in with a baby. That's See? The oh. Mm. That's, that's what just happened? Just, no, just no, no, subtle no. humor. Oh, that's you what just need subtlety. Very subtle. Like, I you see. would have to think about it for a whole day. Yeah. 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 Warren wants to recreate the scene from Carrie, but <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, yeah as <laughs> subtle as a hammer. <laughs> All right, well, we're almost on an hour here. Uh, Tyler writes in, I don't have a whole lot to say at the moment. And then, he, by the way, he writes, <laughs> then he writes three sentences, uh, three paragraphs. It's like the beginning of this show. Uh, but I did want to comment on the guy that didn't see the Amazon link on your site. Oh, yeah, but we already covered this. Uh, he had an ad blocker on, turn off the ad blocker, et cetera, et cetera. Um, P.S., screw the few people that have commented about Bevo not sending the shirts from the Twitter game or not sending them promptly. I won the Twitter game in April and received my shirt within a week. She deserves some credit for that. Uh-oh. All right, that makes one of you. Yeah, one time. <laughs> yeah. So let me just point out, the guy that said he didn't get his shirt was the guy that won the book. From Dick, oh, I believe, Dick and that oh, never happened. Okay. And we're gonna, I've already arranged with this particular person that we're gonna work that out at HomebrewCon, so he okay. can pump the brakes. Okay. So you're giving him a shirt because of his mistake? No, so no, you're I'm enabling the behavior? No, I'm gonna find Dick and get this book situation taken care of. Oh, so he gets his book. I don't so think Dick's Sa- at the HomebrewCon. So Sam yeah. is going to HomebrewCon. He said it was. He said he was going, I don't know, whatever, we'll figure it out. I don't care. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. I think you're gonna be disappointed again. <laughs> you just got no, I'm not gonna be. <laughs> Uh, oh, PPS, I want to say oh, suck at JP, but PP. also feel like that time has passed and the BN has matured. I agree. That Thank makes you. me sad and happy at the same time. Shit. Mostly because it means that lunch meat is unlikely to come back, even after Sully has come back as a coho. Okay. Yeah. Well, those two things weren't related, but uh, right. Yeah, I mean, you're 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 probably right. Uh, what's this one? Hi, I've always downloaded the individual show MP3s from the web pages. It's the best option for me. Streaming is not reliable because my homebrew connectivity is or my home connectivity is awful. But with the introduction of Megaphone, uh, which is our new uh, provider, that's true. The option appears to be missing. Am I? Is yeah, that, maybe I should have forwarded that to you instead of putting in feedback. But I thought if there was an issue, it'd be good to to bring up. Well, let's just have a look real quick. A let's little looky loo. See if there's a download. Pop the right. hood on this motherfucker and see what's up. Uh, that's what happens when I click the megaphone play button. Mm -hmm. It starts playing. Or, yep, there it is. You just click the share button. So when you see that on the very link that you sent me, which, for example, was for the uh, Virgin Beer Show, on the player, there's a new player there. It's pretty fancy looking, actually. I like it. Uh, There's a share button on the far left bottom. You click that, and then there's a download link. So you can download directly just like you always have. Yeah, boy. There you go. Yeah. All right. Don't let that stop you. That is all the feedback I have uh, for today. But I did want to say one more time, I'm going to reiterate what I said the last time. Duke Cannon. 
You yeah. were talking about you know paying attention to our bodies That's and, right. and making skin care. You have a skin care regime. I do. As a matter um, of fact, I've been using the Duke Cannon products. I gave some to Beardy. I don't know if he's used them yet. Yeah, the the beard wash. You used the beard wash. I did. Mm. And, and I it made my beard feel very nice. Full, it looks shiny, more sleek. full than it's ever looked yeah. right now, and I didn't know if it's because you haven't cut it or um, you're fluffy. No, it's p- extra poofy with yeah. the uh, beard wash, just like you. And it smells like a hefeweizen. Oh, really? That's the flavor. Wow. It says citrusy Hefier. hefeweizen. Damn, dude! <laughs> and come over here. Let me try. Let me try the hef. Come I mean, over here come right on. now. I want to see if you smell like citrusy hefeweizen. Uh, or like spaghetti from lunch. <laughs> I tell you, I've been using this stuff, not the beard wash. It's subtle. Oh, but it's nicely subtle. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. That's what I'm gathering from so, from what you were saying the last time. Like their their products aren't overdone. No, yeah. they're yeah. not. Uh, and that's what I like about them. You got the big ass brick of soap that I tell you I've been using, yep. and that was I, like right now I come out smelling like a pine forest, right? Which right, I really right. like. So you had sex with a pine tree. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm like I, I smell more yep. masculine than I've ever more you know, earth, more uh, earth, and and nice really. Uh, by the okay. way, you can go to Duke Cannon and use coupon code Brewing. Um, you're going to get uh, free shipping on your order over 35 bucks and 15% off your first order if you use coupon code BREWING. I think you should get some for Bevo t- uh, for Sam, too, Bevo. Um, he's not the best-smelling guy I've ever smelled. Dude, I've tried so many things for Sam. Try this. He yeah. washes his face and body with shampoo. Okay, but he, this is I like a giant bar of soap. He will like it. It's called a big-ass brick of soap, and I feel like that alone will make him feel like, oh, I'll just use this. Yeah. It's, it feels more... He'll probably more... use that to wash his hair. But shampoo... Fine. <laughs> but what's sure. wrong with... Shampoo's still soap. Yeah. It's fine. It cleans you. Doesn't mean you're, like, inbred or anything. Yeah. JP, they gave me shaving cream. Do you want to try yeah, it? Yeah, I do. I want. I, yeah, because I, I don't. Sh- I was. I couldn't remember if. You, I never remember if you have a beard. Or sometimes, not. I I do, sometimes I can't remember if Teresa have dreads. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. um, it's actually the reverse, but yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, whatever you got, dude. I like trying stuff. All right, go to DukeCannon uh, dot com and uh, use coupon code Brewing. I think you. I think you won't be disappointed. All right. I wasn't. And I'm usually disappointed. Well, you're very highly focused and in tune with the male body in right. general. All so of a sudden. you mm-hmm. know specifically what is good for the male body. I think that's, yeah, I, I guess. I think it's accurate, right? I, it seems accurate. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> He's been a male for quite a while. Yeah. True. Yeah. For 35 years. <laughs> right. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, our guests who have been waiting there, hopefully they're hammered. Show, man. <laughs> we'll be back with East Brother Beer Company. Hang in there. Hell yeah. Hello, this is David Walker from Firestone Walker Brewing Company. You are listening to The Session on the Brewing Network. All right, welcome back to the program. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We're having a good time already. I got a Vienna lager in my glass for the second time. What? Some of you listeners know what that means. If I do it twice before the guest even comes on, the beer's good. The beer's good. We've got East Brother Beer Company in the studio with us today. Paul Leshevsky, he's the head brewer, and Rob Leitner. Rob, I didn't even ask what you are. I'm one of the co-founders. One of the co-founders, yes. okay. He's a human being. Uh, well, <laughs> well my shrink says we're, we're human doings. <laughs> oh, wait, no, oh. it's the opposite. He says we're human beings, not human doings. <laughs> anyway. You're a human doing. That's my, my little therapy session for you all. <laughs> well, thank you, folks. Uh, East Brother was supposed to be on the show with us last week, but I came into the studio, and our neighbor was jackhammering their floor and my patio, and I didn't want you listeners to have to listen to the rattling uh, all the way through the podcast, so you two are very flexible, and I appreciate that. No worries. All the way from Richmond, California, which is, what, uh, 20, 25 minutes from where we are here in Concord, right? Depending on the, the time of day that you drive here. That's right. Power how, traffic. How long did it take you today? Did you pick a good time About to travel? 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so, it wasn't too bad. A little moderate time to yeah, travel. Not terrible. <laughs> How long Highway is, 4 is a nice ride, you know? Highway 4 is nice. Yeah, I live it. off of that, and it is, yeah, that's like, it, until you get to the, the Pittsburgh area, Highway 4 is a beautiful little drive right there. I used to, I remember I used to have to go to Richmond from here 
our listeners aren't going to give a shit about this, but what do I care? <laughs> Before the Richmond Parkway existed. Mm, Y'all been around that. this area long enough to know yep. that? Okay. Yep. That used to be gnarly. You'd have to go all the way down uh, into Berkeley and Oakland and then up to Richmond. Well, we're all navigating right now. Yeah, mm. we really are, because Richmond Parkway has probably been there for 20 years now. I don't even know what. When I was your guys' uh, age. Richmond. Oh, I mean, yeah. The, it's the been... Parkway. The par- just the Parkway. Probably Richmond is, is Richmond is one of, is a very old historical city. Oh, it's, it's a great it's a great city, great industrial history. Yeah. So why don't we why don't we dive into that just a little bit? But first, how long has East Brother been a brewery? We opened in late, late, late 2016. Okay. Yeah. Late 2016. About two and a half years. Where are you from? Oakland. You're from Oakland originally, and Paul, where are you from? Uh, originally from Baltimore and San Francisco now. Okay. How long have you been living out in the Bay? A little over 20 years, 23-something, okay. give or take. So you've been here a while? Yes. And Rob, in Cal- in the area, how long have you been here? Um, my whole life. Your whole life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we can talk a little bit about, like, Richmond, right? Like, we can say <laughs> that since I've been living here, you know, Richmond ha- has been through, it's had a lot of history. It's had a sordid history. Um, partly, it's it's an industrial area. Uh, more than partly, really. Of course, you got the refineries there. Um, you got a lot of uh, warehouse district and, and industry, and and then you've had some tough neighborhoods for a while too, right? right? I think we it's okay to say all that, right? Oh, yeah. um, but it is one of those like last bastions of the Bay Area that has this opportunity to evolve, right? Am I am I saying? Do you think I'm on the right I track totally, here? Totally agree. That's why. That's one of the reasons we're there. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I know some other breweries have thought about it, too. Uh, even, I don't think he'd mind me saying, I know that Roger over at Faction uh, w- even was down to, had a building ready to go before he, I think, got a different deal in Alameda and decided there. Um, there's a couple of you in Richmond now. That's right. Uh, yeah. Well, Armistice. Armistice, who, you know. who we've had on, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, you guys. Yep. Who else? Well, there was Ben Casper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. And they've, they've kind of wound it down mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're which we're really bummed about because sure. there's there is a lot of excitement in Richmond, a lot of a lot of great stuff going on, and it's it's mm-hmm. on the, the 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 front end of what we feel is a resurgence. <laughs> so what's changing? What 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 is attractive about Richmond to you? Well, we you know we we didn't look at that many places. Um, we didn't really know where we were going to put where we we're going to you know locate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and independently, Chris. Uh, Coomber, my business partner, and I—he's the brewing side. I'm the business side. Okay. Um, we we independently uh, drove around Richmond and came to the same conclusion, which was this place is freaking awesome. Mm. It's exactly what we want to do. I mean, well, I'm, I assume we'll, we'll talk about our beers at some point. As like, we, yeah, you bet. Those are like the kinds of beers we're making and the kind of vibe we're trying to create, the branding, um, kind of the, sort of the understated nature of what we're trying to do to us, Richmond just was a perfect fit for that so the first thing was you know it's it's a it's a great location we didn't really think much beyond that but only after we got there did we realize there's a lot of really cool stuff happening in richmond okay yeah so i'm just trying to read between the lines a little bit and you mentioned your beer styles and kind of we're going to talk about that you've got some classic styles i've got your vienna lager in my glass which we're going to talk about for sure because i'm loving it is it is it kind of a blue collar environment that that you were looking for that fits you as well? Is is that part of what you're saying that it's not this kind of I don't know hoity toity or something? I'm yeah. trying to get this this neighborhood yeah. fit that you're talking about. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at our branding, so we have these this sort of two two uh, tone color style, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 supposed to be inspired by freighters, There's freighters that come like just you know a mile down the road from where we are into the port the tanker ships the freighter ships right okay yeah Yeah. and and just just the um the again sort of that understated nature of richmond 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 historically has gone through you know years and years of tough times yeah and it doesn't it's not a city that sort of you know pounds its chest and says come check us out no Um, you're right but it's on as i said we feel we're on the forefront of something um it's it's amazingly centrally located when you think about it it really is it's got the most coastline of any city in the bay yeah 34 miles 36 miles something like that crazy beautiful coastline. yeah yeah Uh, and and unvisited i would encourage you guys to go check some of that it's really neat well let's just take a minute to even talk about that just for our listeners because you can go uh almost directly across the bay uh, into the into Marin and um, um, 
San Rafael yeah. and their coastline. And immediately you're talking about some of the most expensive real estate <laughs> on planet Earth. It's on the same bay. Yep. We're mm-hmm. just talking on two different sides of the bay. Yeah. And this is part of how uh, I think communities end up organized and, and even their history, right? So part of Richmond's history being that it's industrial, being that it's a port, there's no real there's no real port in Marin, right? And okay. so uh, there's a stigma that, that can come with that, right, over time. By the way, <laughs> and I'm being I'm not exaggerating. I have always, I think almost in my entire life lived within five miles of, refi- of a refinery. <laughs> when I lived in Los Angeles, it wasn't just up here. For some, my parents have a fucking affinity for refineries. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and look how I turned out. It's fine. Uh, point being, like, some of this stigma... So I'm just sort of giving our, our, our audience this picture because you're right. Over 30 miles of coastline, the same coastline as Marin has, uh, which is not, by the way, speckled with refinery, um, and yet still it, it might be slower to develop in a residential or community format mm-hmm. because of industry, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's a lot of undeveloped area, Point Malate being one of those, mm-hmm. which was which has been it's been subject to lawsuits for years, and they've been the city and developers, and things are just settling down now, and there's a time limit around developing it but it's north of the richmond bridge and okay again no one ever goes to it again encourage you guys to i want to go see it yeah i've it's, never been it's super cool there's tons of open space there's something called um uh, uh wine haven which was the biggest wine sort of uh, distribution center in pre-prohibition times okay of prohibition killed that but it's this beautiful giant uh brick castle essentially no kidding yeah, if you come across from uh west to east across the Richmond bridge you can see it um but they're figuring out what should we do with it you and know, no so. one even knows about this exactly there's a lot of really kind of undiscovered stuff going on in richmond okay all right and then we, we can't discount i mean i have to ask you probably also got a better space at a better price than you might have obviously in san francisco paul that would have been ridiculous um, but even most of the places in the bay area i think so although honestly we d- we did not even look in any other city so oh is that right we never even like price compared we just you know we looked at a, a bunch of different places in richmond found a place that we love it's up against this hillside, Miller Knox Regional Park. Okay. It's beautiful. There's wild turkeys out there. There's frogs. There's, you know, croaking wow. in the wintertime when it rains. It's really, it's kind of magical. Okay. Um, yeah, so the tap room has turned out better than we thought. More people come than we thought would come. Okay. Um, but, yeah, fundamentally, though, it was like, where can we get a nice big warehouse, 25-foot ceilings, you know, 12,000 square feet? It's in a, The building is, I think, over 100,000, so we're only one unit in the warehouse. But you're uh, already 25,000 square feet. Sorry, 12. 12 okay, yeah. 12. Yeah, 12,000. Teresa, what's your – I always, I always need, oh, like, a, a perspective. The, so my tap lane. room, everything in my building is 5,000 square feet. Okay, got and it. And the brewery is, like, 2,200 square feet. 2,500 square feet. Okay. All right. Yeah, we've got about half the space allocated to, to brewing now between the, the brew house and the cellar. Super jealous. But room but room to grow, or is yeah. the other 100,000 feet already used up by everybody else? Uh, right? Our landlord, we have a great relationship got room with to him. Go. Okay. He said, look, if you guys ever need something, let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. But we still have room within our existing sure. footprint. So. so that's the first, maybe your second smart move, picking Richmond and then picking that because a lot of you know breweries we talk to, they come on here and they're like, yeah, we just didn't plan to grow. Now we gotta, now we have to move across town. Uh, growth just happened faster than we thought. So, all right, let's come back to that in a second. I want to come back to the community and where you are, but I want to talk about this beer first because we have two in our glass that, that everybody has, but I have to just talk about the Vienna. Yeah. yeah. Teresa. Yeah, it's fabulous. You like it, right? Yeah. It's, if this was all there was, I'd be super happy. <laughs> it's so to style. It's so uh, here's a dumb thing to say. It's so much better than Negro Modelo, which I enjoy. <laughs> which I enjoy, but it's so much more craft. Like yeah, it, because it, it has it has more body. I think to it. I think Negro Modelo can be a little thinner at times. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think maybe that's the main difference. Uh, I guess in in craft versus macro or independent versus or whatever we're supposed to be using right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's more you can call it flavors flavors <laughs> you know what I mean there's more presence to it there's more oomph to it but not in an overwhelming way yeah and not in a in a a way that will tire your palate out mm-hmm. no and like I was saying before you guys were in here I was trying to describe to JP like um, toffee mild roast like nutty nutty roast mm-hmm. um, at, at just a great beer tell us about the beer yeah. Paul. Like what's what? Give it the malt bill. I want everything. Give us the whole thing. <laughs> uh, well, it, you know, we do go after 
following kind of classic styles. Uh, it's got a little bit of Munich, uh, Vienna, some chocolate. Uh, walk some, see something or rather buy it, and some Pilsner. Uh, all uh, middle fruit, Hello Tower middle fruit hops. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's, you know, for me, for us, it's, it's all about lagering and letting the beer do its thing, giving it time. Don't rush things. We were cold lagering, so it's it's a full six week six week profile from from kettle to to keg, you know, to package. Wow, for us. So how dare you do it like that? <laughs> right. How dare you let it sit like it's supposed to? Yeah. Uh, but it really. I mean, I I'd like to think that I can tell. You know, we take a similar approach to some of our lagers, and just having those German ingredients just gives mm-hmm. it that classic flavor. It's it. You know, it really shows. Yeah, the, yeah. makes the, it really the time authentic. And yeah. Patience and yeah, yeah. Even ours that we did. Uh, I think I was mentioned to y'all before the show. We we did a collaboration with Sierra and we did mm-hmm. a Vienna and we wanted to. We had to mess with it a little bit, so we put some more new school stuff into it and. It was not quite as authentic as this. You know, it was a, even a little sweeter. I think Beardy. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember, but yeah, uh, this one is not sweet, but full of like yeah, that chocolate malt comes through in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, we're really happy with it for a beer that's less than five percent and still packed with a lot of flavor and something you can really drink all day and not think twice yeah. about. You know, you're going to buy a four pack, and before you know it, they're all gone. Right. So this hey, beer, it, go ahead. Oh. Uh, this beer, especially when you get to the darker side of Vienna lagers, you have to. It's a really delicate balance between the hop bitterness and the whatever little amount of roasted grain astringency that you can get, and your water chemistry. And mm. it's. I was going to ask how long this beer has been around because if it's your first time, you just nailed it right out of the gate, or you've tweaked. Yeah, or or if it's not, then how long did it take to kind of dial it in? Uh, Chris, our founding brewer, spent a lot of time developing the recipes with Rob and many iterations. I came in a year after they opened, so I inherited the recipes and, you know, just make sure they're executed Mm -hmm. as as expected and produce really clean, smooth beer. Yeah. Yeah, we've been Uh, brewing this since since day one, but as Paul said, previous to that, it had been brewed for years. Like on (laughs) a a, a, a a home brew scale? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. And in our market, you know, this is not the most popular style of beer, but you're saying that in your market or your community, is this something that, that does very well for you? Yeah, it's definitely one of the more popular beers really? in the tap room. I'm um, proud of well, Richmond yeah. for that yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. it, it goes with a lot of food. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. We found, like, in distribution, it tends to get carried at restaurants um, because, it go, you know, pills goes with everything, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, but but Vienna Lager also, there's a little more, you know, a little more character, richness, as you guys said. It's kind of nuttiness, you know, toffee, things like that. So I think it, it matches up, uh, but also complements food very well because it'll cut bigger, bolder, greasier foods, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so and in distribution, we often hear, oh, I got, you know, 800 IPAs, but I, ha- I do not have a red lager. And, and they was, that. really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so it all, it, I think it fills a niche. Okay. The pendulum swinging back. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I'm going to get yeah. back behind that pendulum and just keep it <laughs> right. the show, yeah. right? We're helping. I mean, I guess <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little surprised by that a distributor might say something like that. Not entirely. but So Jamil, I talked to Jamil more about beer than anybody. And so he was one, he's always an example for me. And, you know, he, his flagship beer was Evil Twin, right? This hoppy mm-hmm. red. And did not make an IPA for a while. And so on one hand, uh, as you're saying, a distributor might say, oh, we don't have a hoppy red right now. But the distributor just kept begging him to do an IPA. Just please, please, please do an IPA. Like not a red IPA, uh, but no, just, just a an plain IPA. old IPA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so and, and he, I, don't, I don't know if it was on principle or whatever. But finally, of course, he ended up putting out uh, Evil Cousin, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, but, you know, for a while, they still were just like, give me another IPA. Give me another IPA. And you're saying, hey, keep giving us this Vienna, which is nice. Yeah, it's. I mean, it feels like we're just a little bit of a, you know, uh, it's. It's. I think it's complimentary. Okay. And, hmm. Do right. you guys have an IPA? Yes, we do. Yeah, oh, we that's too bad. <laughs> that's why they're. <laughs> you have to. That's why they're still in business. That's I, know. Like, yeah, yeah. I know. And a hazy IPA. We don't have a hazy. Yeah. IPA. Some love. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't going to yeah. say anything, but you asked me, so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, it's in the fermenter yard now. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, you, you just haven't gone that route yet. Lots of refrain. Yeah. No, I. You, everyone's doing hazy, and 
we don't need another. Okay. You know, there's about a thousand breweries in California right now, and yeah, you know, fourteen hundred hazies. We don't need to be fourteen hundred and one. Do people ask you? Do you get customers coming in and be like, "Hey, what what do you have that's hazy?" All the time. And what do you What do you tell them? <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Well, we've got a red IPA, we've got a gold IPA, and we've got a double IPA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try one of those. Yeah. Sure. But but also, you know, uh, they ask about other things. They ask about a saison. They ask about a hef. I mean. You know, we we have a we have actually a pretty limited lineup when you think about it because we focus so much on the five core that we have, which is you know the red lager, the bow pills, which are here, uh-huh. uh, a oatmeal stout, and then two IPAs. Basically, the double is really just a um, a seasonal that we did. We, we could tell you. Okay. Those, but. Do you focus on those um, so as not to just get convoluted with your own selves or? To focus on what you can do in the tap room and what you can do distribution and not fill your tanks with, like, one-off stuff. Yeah, it's really been, f- from again, from the days of homebrew, it's really like, let's 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 focus on a limited number of things and do them very well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's plenty of, of uh, uh, you know, beer of the day out there, and that's great. Like, yeah. I like going to those places. Hey, what do you have that's new? And, oh, that's interesting and whatever. But we're, I don't know, there's some, maybe, I mean, Chris and I are a little older. <laughs> you know, we've got kids yeah. and, you know college and out of college so uh, right uh, uh we just i don't know we, we remember those days of of flagship beers and yeah. it still is a thing um and when you look at the total volume of beer sold in this country and around the world it's a certain style of beer yeah it's, you know it's a it's lager it's pilsner so there's something to us uh that's interesting about that and and do again doing kind of the same thing and doing doing a fewer number of things very well yeah as opposed to trying something new all the time it's just not we don't have anything against that approach at all but that's sure. not just really taking a different our style there's a beer writer and he's gonna hate me when i see him next that i can't remember his name right now he's been doing this for a while jay jay, Brooks. Not, jay, not, jay. <laughs> <laughs> not jay uh he's a jay equivalent he's, he's been there for a while anyhow uh, forgive me when i see you um he wrote an article about flagship beers and he it, it was kind of saying how come we don't have a flagship beer day? Was that that wasn't Jeff Allworth, was it? No, no. no but he's like he's kind of saying, look, we have IPA day. We have I don't know what else, we have all the days, right? And he was kind of saying we really should have flagship day for and and he made a, several arguments that we all know in this room. Um, one of them is the one that that you've just made that you know if you can make a core group of beers really well, you should. Um, the other one was, of course, that it's very difficult to stay in business if you have to make the beer of the day, as you as you called it. Um, that, that 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 flagship beers are what invented Sierra Nevada. It's what invented um, shit Lagunitas. You know, people who even came later. Um, and that we, as cons- he was writing to consumers, he wasn't writing to those of us who are in the industry. He was writing to consumers that like, yeah. hey, don't forget, the industry actually exists today because of the flagship beer movement before it. Mm-hmm. And even though, you know, that might not support every brewery nowadays, it still supports most of them, mm-hmm. you know. I Firestone think, is a flag, you know, it might not be their original flagship beer. Stephen Beaumont. But Edo Beaumont, thank you. You're Stephen, welcome. I apologize. I could, forgive me. Um, I thought it was a great article pointing this out that, um, and ho- it, it'll come back. It'll come full, full circle. And hopefully enough breweries can hang on, you know, through the flagship's suck era. <clears throat> Jay Brooks actually did a flagship appreciation month. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where he, each day he was, based he was on that. posting. Based based that was off of oh, okay. They're friends. Thing. That might have happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, you know, and I read it, and I didn't buy into it too much because, I mean, flagships were flagships because everyone was drinking them, not because they were pushed as flagships, right? You're right. So, but, but it's the business model yeah. that works. And in fact, works so well that we have a craft beer industry because of it. Sure, but now flagships are the new IPA. Because that's what everyone's drinking. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know if flagships necessarily are, and I, obviously I don't know shit <laughs> from anything, but I, I don't know if flagship is even still a usable term mm-hmm. marketing-wise or even internally. I mean, I don't know if breweries, I don't know if breweries are even focused on that. And you, core, you say about core, your core beers, mm-hmm. but even that's not one, that's five, and you can kind of split the difference there a little bit yeah well, i think one of the things that could be kind of sad for the future is if nobody does flagship beers anymore like how are you ever going to hone that beer and make it the best it can be you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. make it the best beer of that style that you could ever produce if you yeah. don't go yeah. back you don't look back you're always looking for and trying to do something new and different 
Yeah. You know? And I think, JP, when I say flagship, I'm using that, I guess, a bit interchangeably with core. Because I think you make a okay. good I think you make a good point. I'm not talking about Sierra Pale Ale. Yeah, and to that's me, it. flagship yeah. is one. Is one, yeah. 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 I guess I'm using core and, and those interchangeably. Okay. I accept and, your apology. And, <laughs> and, Teresa, I think you're right. Like, that allows, like, you guys, okay, uh, let's just move on to the Bo Pills as we're doing this. Hell yeah. You've got that one dialed in, too. Uh, I'm going to say right Wait, now. you've tasted it before us? I did, so uh, rude. rude as hell. Dude. Because I'm a good interviewer, I got to be ready for the next oh. I got to be ready for the yeah. next moment. Oh, okay. the three sure. pack hands he we get sent, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I've never had your beer before today. I have not had your beer. Uh, uh, Bevo often just books and uh, sometimes I'll have it ahead of time and sometimes I won't. Um, and I'm I'm mad at myself that I haven't tried your beer yet. The Bow Pills is also stellar. You guys have it's, dialed it's this. Very in. good. This is probably I like the Vienna a lot. I like this over that. You like the Bow Pills more it's, than the Vienna? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Me it's, too. It's it's crisp. The hop flavor is there. Mm. Um, it's little like, firm bitterness. That perfumey malt kind of thing. That yep. sort of. Reminds me, and it, some people might take this as a negative, but for me, I think it's a positive. It's like suntan lotion-y. Yeah. But in a good, like, that's perfumey, the perfumey, vibrant perfumey. way. Yeah. 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 And and that's kind of what I look for in, in, in the bow pills that, that I enjoy, mm-hmm. is that kind of, like, hop malt character that plays well together. And the, the, the esters from the yeast, it's just the whole thing. It's very good. <laughs> it is. I, I appreciate this beer uh, immensely. Yeah. I really do. Thank you. And the the firm bitterness is a boy. It it kind of it ramps up, and I keep waiting for it to keep going. And it's like it's it's like you used AI to make it happen or something because it <laughs> stops at the perfect fucking point. Yeah, it like mm-hmm. you take the sip and you get all of the floral and sweetness of the malt, mm-hmm. and then the the bitterness starts to ramp up, and I'm like, uh oh, here it goes, yeah. and then. It just stops. It's like if only if David Carradine could have had that restraint, <laughs> yeah. we would still have the greatest actor of our day. You guys should be proud of this beer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if he could have just, that is just unbuckled. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for it. And it accept did. the it hit me. Um, I will I will I will kiss fight anybody for the remainder of this beer. <laughs> and this is really good. There's more. Tell us about this one, yeah. Paul. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward recipe. Uh, all Pilsner uh, malt with just a little bit of carapils for some head retention, uh, and then uh, Tetan Steering Aurora. Okay. Uh, so probably a little bit later, Hopper, uh, later additions in in the boil uh, for, for the bitterness and, and some flavor. Uh, it's probably not exactly true to style, but people like it. and But no dry hopping? No dry hopping. Okay. No dry hopping. Aurora, but, is that a German strain uh check steering aurora che- so. Steer- okay Steer- got it yeah what what are you guys doing for water um uh, richmond water with uh just some salts added to it to okay you're not yeah. removing anything it's just richmond no. water out of the tap just a little bit of adjustment yeah through, you know a little bit of adjustment you know carbon filter nothing okay nothing nothing crazy not ro here no yeah and is the richmond you... water that good what or do you know what it it's coming is? from hetch Hetchy, so oh it's, okay <laughs> so it's we fine actually yeah, import yeah. our yeah. water from germany mm. that's interesting yeah. to me richmond water is hetch Hetchy water just like yes. san francisco yeah but it's across the bay that surprises me san francisco is also across the bay from hetch Hetchy. it is where's hetch Hetchy? New York. Well, Hetch Hetchy's Yosemite. Yosemite. Yeah. Right. So. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought yeah. it was closer. I thought it was in, like, the the uh, peninsula area. Yeah, East Bay mud. East Bay water comes from a mul- from multiple sources. Right. Got it. it. So okay. There's, there's so some, we do get some, some, some East Bay mud. Oh, okay. seasonally? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. A little blend. All right. So, but, it's, but it's good. We look, I mean, we looked and we moved in, and we were, mm-hmm. you know, we tested it pretty extensively and felt, you know, pretty damn good yeah wait, wait let me just clarify because i would have done what you just said which you said you looked when you moved in did you look before you moved in <laughs> right. we did not you did not look before oh. which is what i would have done too yeah. Yeah. that's interesting yeah. to me and i would have done that because i feel like i'm i'm slow well we had in the back of our mind okay we might need to do some sort of big you know gyration in the water category but it turns mm. out you oh. know so you just figured you're gonna deal with it either way figure it out. Okay. yeah okay All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Nice. It's working in this beer, too. Man. Uh, how do you achieve this clarity? Is it fining, filtering, lagering? Uh, lagering and filtering. But oh, you on- filter. Honestly, by the time we filter, this, it's almost, you feel like you're wasting your time hmm. with, with the filter. But it does make it last a lot longer on the shelf and keeps it really 
bright and and well bright beer. Mm-hmm. So no fining, just lagering, and then a, and then actually run it through like a plate filter, DE filter, a DE filter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it wow. is brilliantly so beautiful. Yeah, yellow are. clear. Yeah, yeah, the Vienna too. That's right. Uh, and this also will this will be in a tank for six weeks before it ever yep. get, gets out of there. Yeah, absolutely. What yeast on this? Uh, German lager yeast. Okay, same as the as in the Vienna. Mm-hmm. So with the floral notes in this, that's not none of that's yeast driven. That's hops and malt. Yep. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Man, if I had a brewery, I, I would just bullshit. Oh, it's cow. It's cow ale. Yeah. And like, how do you do that? Do you, well, look, it's, it's proprietary. I don't really want to talk about it. I don't want to right. get into it too much. But sort of what we do is we just pray to Satan around the tank. Right. And that's what he provides. I guarantee. The dark Lord provides. I guarantee that has happened on this show before. <laughs> <laughs> yep, somebody yep. has just said, oh, it's just cow. And they're totally lying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I would agree with you. Right. Yeah. Do you do you have other house strains? Like, so you have this lager strain. Uh, yeah, we have the lager strain, and then we uh, have our, an ale strain. <clears throat> Sorry, and then for the specialties, I may branch out into some other strains, and just kind of give me something new to play with, and give the tap room something new to drink, and okay, and whatnot. So, okay. are you messing with that Quebec yeast or whatever? That's like the new hotness Fun, now. Funny you ask. <laughs> funny you ask. That. We, uh, <laughs> well, Chris is you know Chris Cohen and I go back into our home brewing days with SF Homebrewers Guild. Yeah, uh, but we just we just ran a pilot system, a pilot batch, uh, more beer flat sculpture. Oh, nice. Uh, so we'll be. East Probably be uh, in the tap room either this weekend or next. But okay, okay, awesome. Did you do yeah. a IPA with that one? No, we just uh, we did a saison ish. Like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we just kind of let it see how hot it could go. And well, and let it yeah, rip. just let it yeah. let it make the beer that it wants to make. And yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, we brewed it on a Friday, so by the time we got in Monday, it was done. So we didn't really see <laughs> how, hot, <laughs> how hot it went, oh, okay. um, but. You know. There was just scorch marks like all around the right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like your style though. You guys aren't over there working twenty four seven. Put it in on Friday. Come back to work on Monday. Try <laughs> you know uh, one of, one of my assistant brewers lives in Point Richmond. So and he's we found him because he was a regular in the tap room and nice. I uh, was looking for something new to do, and yeah. we hired him, and now I have someone who can go check gravities and sure. CO2 levels on the weekends. And I really mean and it whatnot. as a kudos. I, I mean, there's not a whole lot of work-life balance that we hear in this studio from, from breweries, so I meant that as like a, 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 oh, com- a compliment. How, <laughs> how big is the main system? Uh, we're a 20-barrel brew house. Okay. Uh, we got five 20-barrel fermenters and five 60-barrel fermenters and a little random assortment of right tanks okay right now so is it just mainly the two of you then on the on the production floor uh i do have a brewer who is you know basically a shift brewer uh he's you know brewing and you know i I still get up on up on the deck from from time to time uh, especially if we have double brew days Mm i've you know we don't want to burn out our brewer and i've done my share of doubles and sure makes <laughs> makes really long weeks and me really yeah. grouchy <laughs> <laughs> rob rob never noticed no no <laughs> <laughs> i just walk like yeah, yeah. Uh, did he see me yeah. did he see me right <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, and then these beers you're serving us today are in cans. I think we were talking at the break that you guys are just putting in a canning line too. Yeah, uh, we just bought um, a really fat canning line actually. Uh, <laughs> nice, uh, deep house, six head uh, filler uh, with a little bit of a the leads into a, a packing area. Uh, okay. We can you know eventually get a pack tech, but right now we've Hand got packing. assistant brewers and brewers to put pack techs on and tap room folks. Um, yeah, we've been really happy. We ran it uh, Thursday. We ran 200-plus cases and a lot faster than I thought. Uh, I mean, I brought a lot of equipment yeah. online, and I was running it at the maximum speed to the point that the trainer was like, that's too fast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so and you're like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is good. I feel the need. <laughs> We're yeah. for speed no and one more is, cans. No one is talking. It's all asses and elbows. <laughs> <laughs> if I can make it go uh, faster. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> oh my so, god, I um, love this. Even saying that part, I, I, I'm starting to learn about you already. Yeah, yeah. Push, <laughs> just push everybody just enough to the limit where they shut the fuck up and actually yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, but not so hard that they get overworked or lose right. a and leave. Yeah. You yeah. get a weekend. <laughs> well, we can have them up. quit at ten o'clock in the morning when no. we have like four hundred cases to run. But, right, right. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah, but the silence is deafening. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, you're a programmer. That your background before your your previous life was as a programmer. Yeah, I spent almost 20 years in Silicon Valley doing software development, uh, part of the whole dot bomb mm-hmm. era. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And so you missed the fleece vest movement. I <laughs> know. Uh, I, I had to laugh when I saw that because uh, <laughs> then you start noticing. You're like, wow, there are a lot of fleece vests around here. <laughs> wow. You know. You know. I, I do remember back in you know late 90s and the knots that you know there were so many startups that you know they would start up and fail and then all of a sudden you would see whatever dot com on all the homeless people <laughs> oh god all through yeah. the city and you're like oh geez, that would have been great free advertising if they yeah. planned that better but oh man i'm so sure was, that there's a yeah. bunch of brewing network merch on the homeless and conquered too because <laughs> <laughs> we've had some runs of clothing that just didn't make it yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's tribes somewhere just wearing and i'm you know. telling you i have dropped them at the goodwill and i keep just waiting to see that and i'm just gonna be like, I don't know if I'll be proud or I haven't decided. You know, to be completely honest, when I was decide. moving and I, I had some old Brew Network shirts and yeah. even more beer shirts, um, I, I hesitated to give them to the Goodwill Salvation, right. Salvation Army because what I didn't want to do, for some reason in my mind, the weird scenario would be where somebody who's not a listener or somebody would see the shirt and then you specifically would go, hey, man, thanks for listening to the show. And they would go, who are you? I'm trying to enjoy I'm my trying linguine. To, I'm trying to smoke <laughs> yeah. crack. Yeah, yeah. get out of here. And then you would come back to me specifically right. because you knew somehow that I gave the thing away and then right. you would yell at me. Wow, yeah. you thought yeah. – I went down the – same path, not as far as you, yeah. but I was like, gosh, do I really give these away? I'll be disappointed if I see them yeah. on a non-listener. You know? <laughs> All your anyway. concerns are valid, because yeah. there was a time in high school I found a, th- a shirt from a, my history teacher, who was also the basketball coach. Mm-hmm. He gave away one of his coaching shirts that had his name embroidered oh, yeah. on the shirt. You can't do that. And I found it at the Goodwill. And, and you then bought it. Tell me you bought it. I bought it and there wore it to his it. class. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good call. Troll that motherfucker. Oh, man. Good call. Whenever, when anybody asked a question of him, did you answer it? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 right here. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I got I, this, uh, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I showed up to the next game and we just stood behind the bench the whole yeah. time. <laughs> so tell me about how your, your, your programming right. background helps you now. Because I'm imagining you around this new canning line, for example, and probably several other things where you can, I don't know if you're thinking in ones and zeros, but you can like figure this stuff out a little better. Uh, I can answer that question. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheet. Oh, spreadsheet awesome. master. Oh god, Paul. I, so I seriously saw him mm. working on a spreadsheet in the studio. Was, yes, right now on his phone. Paul, the spreadsheet master. Yeah, I I, uh, I started in quality assurance and ended up in project program management. Uh, so Microsoft PowerPoint and. Uh, yeah, well, they don't make it for Excel, a Mac, but, uh, project and, sure. and everything. So, uh, yeah, I do everything in Excel, and it works for me. And, you know, it's... It probably works for those around you, too. I fa- Not that everyone can create those things, but I do think that once you get your, your team on board with some formal functionality like that, some formal project management, everyone is able to communicate better, right? Yeah, and, and you know, it's... You know, for my production team, it's been helpful for them. You know, we're tra- tracking fermentation log, you know, to have a fermentation log. And, you know, I can talk all day and, you know, oh, you want a really drastic slope on your, your fermentation. You want it done. And until you see it graphically represented, it, yeah. it's really hard to picture. But they can also go back and, you know, like, oh, this bow pills look like this and we're in the same line as this. So, yeah, it's going well. Um, you know, for, you know, for me, it's it's all about organizing. You know, your resources. You have ingredients. You have, you know, people power. Um, but everything costs money, so you're always trying to balance those things. When I deal with Rob, he gets a heavy dose of how much do we have, how much does it cost, you know, yeah, and all that. My team doesn't need to see that; they just need to know. You know how many half barrels, how many six stills, how many cases, what's sure. the brew schedule, and. 
That's you a know. good point. So we've had, you know, some of the best brewers come in here and talk about data collection, right? Mm-hmm. Vinny always talks about data collection. Matt Brunelson was just talking about that. But you're talking about data analysis, too, and in a clear way, not just for you, not just for the two of you to sit up in an office and analyze, but for your team. Yeah. Like you said, to, to graphically see how fermentation should look. I think that's an important factor, too, not just collecting all this stuff, but then understanding it. Yeah, understanding what's going on and... You know, when you're packaging something, making the realization, oh, you know, I left that valve open for three seconds. Well, that three seconds was 15 gallons, wow, yeah. a half barrel. And then they start thinking about, you know, I'm going to hold them to it. You know, you had 20 barrels in that, you know, in that bright tank. How come you only got 16 and a half? Where, yeah. did, where did that go? And so they can start thinking about it. And, sure. And to me, that's not even you being a stickler. That's just saying, look, guys, we have the data. Let's understand what it means. Mm-hmm. And that did cost us a keg. That was yeah. a keg. Yeah. So I or, think that's important. Yeah. Or if you waste, you know, three cases getting your canning line up and fired and running, well, yeah, you know, that could make it really hard to make up for the rest of the cases. So For sure. Uh, okay. You know, we're, we're, we're small. You know, right now we're, you know, when I interact with sales folks and stuff is we're 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 still too small to be big and we're too big to be small so we're in this kind of weird gray area and you know the most crucial area probably to figure out what you're going to be yeah and you know the decisions we make today are going to impact our growth and ability to continue making more and more beer and expansion and and all that well, yeah, we've hit that kind of we've hit that that threshold where you have to figure out what to do next. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our chiller's too small. We need a bigger chiller. Yeah. Now the farmer who used to pick up our spent grain, he can't take it anymore. Yeah. Like those sorts of things. Now what do we do? And these yeah. numbers really count now. Like even when you were opening, okay, well a fermenter costs this, and we need it because it fits that, and and the and the brew system is like this, and we need it because it fits that. Okay, but now your decisions are a little more weighted, right? Like you have to decide. Okay, this next thing costs twenty grand, right? And that might get us by for six months, or are we going to spend forty and get by for two years, right? Like that's kind of this moment you're at, right? Like you really got to figure these things out. Which is mm-hmm. why we got the deep palletizer in the six head. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Line. yeah. Like this yeah. is yeah. tough, and 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 I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm sort of. Well, I think you guys are on the right track, obviously, but I I don't envy you, but I think. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a crucial point in most brewers' lives. And I we've had a lot of brewers come in here that have made, I don't want to say the wrong decisions, but tough ones. Because they've done something, and six months later, they got to revamp again. Mm-hmm. Not that you guys are immune to that, right? But that's a tough scenario where you're at. You might go, well, this is probably what our growth is. And then you come on the Brewing Network, and boom! <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's what usually happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, Tuesday's going to suck, isn't going it? going through that right yeah. now. <laughs> Ten years from now, you're going to ask us to revamp your bow pills and rebrand it. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scary <laughs> moment. Scary <laughs> moment. I do have to get us to break, but just we got to talk about the Maybach quickly. Okay. Yeah. And also another great beer, but I have to admit, if you guys are selling a lot of the style Maybach, you're either lying to me or something magical is happening happening in fucking richmond because there's nothing sexy about Maybach and craft beer right now yeah. it's a great beer you guys this is another great beer of yours very estery i think yeah. i would call this one um which we should talk about but are you selling a lot of Maybach? well you got to keep in mind this is so we've got the five core <clears throat> and yeah. the we started we in 2017 that's what we started with in 2018 we said let's do something to address the need for what do you have that's new? Okay. So we introduced, so we kind of doubled down on our loggers, and we introduced the logger series. Cool. Okay. Uh, and the logger series is comprised of the Maybach. I think. Oh no, I think we did a Baltic Porter first, then we did a Maybach. Okay. We did a pre-prohibition logger. Can we just beer. just just put a fine point on how hilarious it is that a logger series is like a new thing or, or a right? thing? I, know. Yeah. I mean, I love that it is, but how funny yeah. is that? But you do six many- loggers? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. What? It's a logger. And people go talk about it. They're like, they have a logger series have you heard of that yeah what's well, a exactly, lager series right? like do, have you ever heard of another brewery other than no like, obviously it, macro brews doing exactly series, right so we thought oh that's gonna be kind of cool yeah and you know how many loggers are there that people know uh my Bach, no they mm-hmm. don't know it and we're not selling a lot of it but the good thing is okay we only yeah. do one batch so okay we have the 20 barrel system we'll do one batch you know a good chunk of that i'll go through the tap room we'll can some we'll keg some and it'll go out to distribution and pretty much you know you can get rid of 20 barrels fairly easily okay. we've got enough you know accounts that are good friends and like our beer and they'll you know they'll take 
educate their customers and, and push yeah. whatever whatever we make, basically. So um, in okay. the case of Maybach, you know, that's... Okay. So you're right. I'm Nobody's glad you were honest. I just, but a great beer. I was merely talking about the style, listeners, just so you know. It's just not one of those things where like, oh, my God, I've been looking for a Maybach. It just doesn't, you know. Um, but a very traditional Maybach. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the estuary profile. Is that a different yeast? or Cal Ale. <laughs> it's a Vermont IPA that we uh, <laughs> fermented zero C <laughs> for twelve weeks, and then yeah. we top it off with Quebec and some enzymes. Obviously, <laughs> do I hop with yeah. 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 and Centennial? Yeah. Brewing is more science than Talk than slowly, than so we can write that down. Yeah. yeah. Um, so th- uh, the original Maybach, it was actually we switched uh, lager yeast a year ago. So the original. Uh, Maybach we did a year ago was much more of like a fest beer, mm-hmm. Oktoberfest yeast. Um, you know, this one, you know, as, as you know, as you're growing and, you know, A, I like to pick weird styles that no one else is doing because yeah. then no one has something to compare you to. You're like, well, I've never had a Maybach. It's pretty good. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, like, I can only think of, of Gordon Biersch right now. No. And you're right. That's more of a fest beer my, my Bach. So mm-hmm. I'm glad you even made that distinction. This one is not a fest beer my Bach. Yeah, you know. this is... Um, you know, this is kind of a traditional spring beer. Uh, so when the Catholics got done Lent, they wanted to drink, you know, good solid seven, eight percent, you know, lager that's been sitting in a cave for, you know, for the winter and, you know, time to drink. Yeah, uh, yeah this one, I believe, was steering Aurora and some middle fruit, uh, obviously Pilsner. Um, and I forget if it was Munich or Vienna okay. uh, that I that I used. But, yeah, I definitely didn't want to go, you know, even with our, our fest beer uh, in the fall, I like to keep them kind of bright and 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 light colored and mm-hmm. as you, you know, did, but still uh, down at low lager temperatures for yeah. the ferment. It's not like you raise it up at all for that. Nope. Not, nothing different there. Nope. Okay. Uh, this one we do we do let rise, uh, you know, from from basically a cold start all the way up to de rest. We kind of just keep bumping the temperatures up uh, as it goes versus our regular lagers where it's more of a step. Okay. You know, we hit a, a milestone, and then there's the project management or me. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, triggers an event. You know, we rest at de rest. Uh, this one, once we start seeing action, we'll start to ramp it up a degree or two every day okay. uh, until we hit de rest. Uh, and that's probably producing a little bit more of the, the esters uh, okay. that you're picking up. In a good way. I like them there. Uh, yeah, I, I like the kind of lighter versions of these beers. You, you, too many times you get a lot of them that are just kind of sweet and heavy and blah, but this is not that. I uh, and I think that the esters in this take place of the sweet and heavy uh, that, that others will have to get that character. This stays dry yeah. and and German lager-like, yeah. but fills in the gap with esters is what I was saying. And yeah. by the way, it might not all be esters. It might also be just some of the floral yeast you're using, too. Yeah. Yeah. If, if uh, Shimke posted a photo of this beer, how many likes do you think she would get? Eight. Wait, Eight. Shimp on our network or hers? Uh, well, either I guess for comparison. Double on hers. Yeah. Yep. If she puts, you know, her her hands in it or her face in it or I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> half if she puts your face in it. Oh, less than half. Well, I think half should... of our half that we would have gotten. Right. Yeah. I think it was yeah. just the beer. It would be half of her post. Let's just do an A B test and let's figure it out. Let's see. A B test. A B test. My p- my <laughs> okay. face. On your friggin' stupid network. <laughs> what if it gets more? She'll be disappointed if it gets more likes than her. I will license my likeness to her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get us to a break because right. I'm having a good time. We got more to talk about. We've got a couple more beers to try. <laughs> I'm going to get us to uh, a break. I'm having a good time and I don't want to be. Yeah. Uh, so let's, yeah. 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 let's interrupt <laughs> that right off. Yeah. <laughs> if I do that, we'll be here until 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hang in there. You're listening to East Brothers, uh, East Brother. I keep doing that. East Brother beer on the session. We'll be right back. This is Corey King from Side Project Brewing, and you're listening to the session on the Brewing Network. There's my- 
Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with us. We are still hanging out with East Brother Beer Company from Richmond, California. You can go to eastbrotherbeer.com if you want to learn more about them there. They've got a great website, all sorts of content on there, so you can find out uh, more about the things that we're talking about here over there. Now, we got more beer in our glass, and Paul... Uh, you kind of mentioned it before the break, too, and I was reading it in my notes, that you kind of like odd styles. You like historical styles. You mm-hmm. like to research and then make historical styles. It sounds like Maybach is kind of one of those. Can you give me any other examples of these like odd historical styles you've gone into? Sure. Uh, so uh, part of our lager series is uh, pro- pre-Prohibition lager. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I come from home brewing and, you know, as you kind of make a conscious decision that I want to be pro, you want your beers to be drank. So I was always looking for something different and new. So I did a pre-pro porter uh, okay. years ago. And I've I never like, had one of those. You know, it's you know basically if, you know for me it boils down to six row corn, and then that one is you know you add some dark malts to give it the color and no two uh, row, no two row. So okay. uh, when you know, I like to go back, research, you know, what ingredients were available at the time, what possibly might have they been using, uh, and, and try to keep it, you know, close to that. I'm not going for, like, a true authentic, you know. Okay. It's 1932, and this is the... Which you wouldn't know guy. anyway, I guess, what it tasted like, but yeah. you're, you're making your best guess. Or yeah, something. exactly. Okay. Um, okay. You, know, the, you know, the funny thing is when we did, first did the pre-pro lager and I ordered... Uh, the hops, uh, the you know, country mall or whoever it was, called me up and they're like, "You said cluster, right? <laughs> Did you do the <laughs> check? <laughs> because the box, the box was really close to Centennial, uh, and I don't know yeah. if you uh, checked the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you wanted cluster, right? And wow. I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." And they're like, "Great." Nice. Well, they'll be there in two days. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you sure you don't want more? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They hung up and they're like, "Gray we price. got him, dude, yeah. <laughs> sucker. Fuck <laughs> that guy. They hit a bell and shit. They had a party. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just one guy. Janet over in the corner has been right. trying to sell Cluster for a year. <laughs> yeah. In uh, April, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Restrooms are for winners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what else in a, in a pre-pro lager? Like, what's the malt bill on that? Uh, what's different there? Um, it, it's just raw. I don't, know, I don't think it's even raw. I don't think they make a six row, but it's a uh, six row. <laughs> it is a six. Even and uh, and flake maize. Interesting. Mm, okay. Uh, how yeah. gosh, how that became American light lager is is just fascinating to me, right? Because so it's sort of we had these kind of German style loggers in America though. Yeah. And they were American, you mm-hmm. know, but but influenced and and in many cases made by German descendants, right? Yeah. Then we are. have prohibition, then then it comes back and all of a sudden it's like in bulk, right? And we start to cheapen things. So yeah. to me that's fascinating too. How does 6 row base malt react differently in fermentation to 2 row? Three uh, times as much. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, you I know guess. You see sugar is sugar, so um, they're not really differentiating. Oh, that's a six-row. So it's uh, not like there's more unfermentable sugars, I guess. I always had this impression that, like, six-row would have more dextrinous sugars. It no, can't there's, be. there's probably a little bit more proteins. Uh, you know, the, the one cool thing is when we do these, these series, I get to experiment with our, our brew house. And, you know, if it's a... You know, ends up being a twelve-hour brew day. We're only doing it once a year. That's okay, ish. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember, like, fifteen, twenty years ago, uh, Budweiser was having marketing around their six row, and they said they a little bit of six row added for snap. A little snap. A little snap. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And I'm like, huh. Was that marketing well, is bullshit? Snap compared call. to like rice? I guess. Sugars? It I would have more snap than that. It would definitely know. have more snap. But, but it was it was huh. just it was the weirdest thing. It was right. like, and so that was like the running joke in the in the homebrew shop. It was okay. like what the f- Oh, you want some snap? Six row is your is <laughs> right. your go, man. Yeah. You gotta have some snap in it's there. It's right there. Well and then yeah. flake maize instead of corn. Yeah, but I mean, that is more of a, you know, I don't have an adjunct cooker, so that is just the easiest way of getting corn maize into into your mash. It's, okay. you know, the hard work's pretty much done, and, you know, it's almost like corn oatmeal or, you know, corn oats sure. type, type mixture. So, How'd you like the beer when it came out? Um, 
Yeah, for me, it's a really tough one because we're tasting the beers through fermentation, you know, daily lives, and there are some days you're like, holy shit, this is corny. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> like, and then you become really sensitive, sensitive to it, and then when you're going through the whole diacetyl arrest thing and, you know, you're – your point of reference is hot buttered popcorn. You have a beer that tastes like corn and hot buttered popcorn. Mm-hmm. You're like, what's going on with this? Yeah, now and, you're terrified. You know, you know, it's like everyone tastes this and let me know, is it too much corn and is the butter gone? Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, it's so it made you nervous. It stressed you out. A lot of things stress me out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything not in a spreadsheet stresses Paul out. Pretty That's much. Yeah. <laughs> Any variables and that, that are under my can't, control. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you're putting that on the spreadsheet, but that yeah. is, then now you're looking at it visually and it's terrifying you even more, I guess. But in the end, it, it cleaned up as it should. Yeah, and, it cleans up and, and uh, it ended up being a really nice balance. And, you know, you still get a, a prevalent uh, corn forward uh, flavor to it, but it's. You know, it's nice. It's not, I don't think it's over the top, and it, it ends up being a really great summer beer. And, you know, it's especially, you know, summer team turn, you know, you bring out your non craft beer drinkers to breweries in the summer because the weather's nice, you can hang mm-hmm. out. And someone's like, I usually drink Coors or Bud. What do you have? And you're like, oh, pre pro longer. And they're like, oh, this is really great. And, yeah, you know, hopefully you went over another tongue or another mouth and, you know, sure. expand like, hey, you know, this is, you know, I don't think I'm going to displace cores or bud with with this beer. But no, but you're proving craft can be something else. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, there can be more flavor to, you know, industrial lagers uh, than than kind of what we've been told. And, yeah, and and there used to be, as a matter of fact, which hence the style. Yeah. So that's another thing I always like is that we can say, oh, that there can be, but. It's it's fun for me also to tell people there used to be like yeah. that before prohibition the beer that you know you know the mass beer that you know now didn't exist it was it was very different and in fact the Europeans might not have made fun of us before prohibition for the beer that we made <laughs> yeah but you know before prohibition you know your six row could have come from the farmer down the street and if you lived in a different state that same six you know, same six row yeah. was coming from a different farmer. So you had a lot of variance in kind of regionality and character yeah. uh, to, to what was being produced. And, you know, it's, you know, what's in your glass, you know, used to be much more so representative of the agriculture yes. around you. Yeah. And, not, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm not mock- knocking big beer. You of know, course. when you get, when you drink a Budweiser, it tastes like a Budweiser no matter what country you drink it in. And that's hard to do. Yeah, um, just like but, a Big Mac. Yeah, exactly. And but along that process, you have to make conscious decisions and you know homogenize your ingredients to yeah. make it more predictable or you know manipulate it in a way so you know if it was you know brewed in this brewery or in this brewery, it's the same beer. Sure. Um, but you know it's you know. I enjoy kind of looking for those kind of oddball styles that people don't do. Yeah. Um, you know, we just did an, an English Strong for the Freighter series, and, you know, a lot of the reaction was, I don't remember the last time I had an English Strong. Of course, yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, it's... And that 21-year-old was like, I actually, never. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the ABD in this beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. right. <laughs> I can't feel my toes or my, toes yeah, or right. my fingertips. Yeah. And and so see, so that's nice. You're getting to introduce people to these kind of styles, too, and making them go, yeah, I don't remember even having one. Yeah. And I imagine you did them well, like all of these others, too. And I just to go back to the kind of, you know, used to... Uh, the agriculture used to be around you when you were mm-hmm. brewing, you know, pre-prohibition. It goes back to like, you know, in in Germany, every every village, every town had a brewery mm-hmm. for a reason. It's, it was actually just practicality. Like they wanted beer, and you you only made beer locally. You yeah. didn't you didn't transport beer. There wasn't refrigeration. Like you just that's just yeah. what you did. It was as far as you could carry it. And so we're not exactly reinventing the wheel with craft beer in America. With all you know, we we joke about these like hun- there's a hundred breweries that pop up a day or whatever the new BA mm-hmm. number is, right? But they're really just presenting us with what it used to be, that yeah. every village, <laughs> town, city mm-hmm. has a brewery. Absolutely. Of course, we have choices uh, on top of that, but it's, we're, not even, we're not even changing history. We're going back 
right? Mm-hmm. Like you guys in Richmond. Now, there's only, only a couple of you. Um, and before, there wasn't a brewery around. So you're like, it's, it harkens back, even though we think, oh, craft beer's brand new, and it's all new, and everything we do is new. Yeah. That's not really that fucking new. Wait, we're not special? <laughs> yeah, really, sorry. You're not there's that special. Really what? One, yeah. One thing I'd love to import from Germany, I, I went there when I was in college. Granted, it was a long time ago, but we, they, the family I stayed with had a beer man that mm-hmm. worked with the local brewery, and they had all these swing top bottles, and they would have a beer delivery, kind of like, like a milkman. Milk oh. man. Wow. It was the beer man, and they wow. would take their bottles, their empties away, <clears throat> wash them, and reuse them, and they would deliver beer. So, house. Mm. Teresa, Rip Beer that we had on uh, our last episode, mm-hmm. they aren't doing it as much, but when they started, they were delivering beer door to door. Yeah, oh, growlers man. of beer. I'm talking dude. like now, you, like you modern could, day. You could call what? them up yeah. and order growlers, yeah. and they will bring them to you and, wherever you are. And they uh. are still doing it, but it, like in the beginning, it was their thing. Now, yeah. Yeah. it's not the whole like exchange your milk bottle or your, yeah. or your flip top for new ones, which I also love, but I was... I loved them for what they're doing, and I was like, "This is a cool thing." So they're in Huntington Beach, Huntington Beach, and you can still call and get growlers delivered and, uh, right oh, from man. the brewery. Huh. Yeah, if it's, only uh, I mean that would be like one reason to move there. Unfortunately, I have like a hundred reasons not to. Move not there. too sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm going to put start it in your area. Teresa. Okay, another task I, that you need. <laughs> I actually I want this bad enough that I might be willing to. Try to spearhead it. And frankly, in communities like yours, and I'm sorry to do this to you two, but communities like yours in Richmond as well, it's actually possible. Like, I'm not saying you deliver all over the Bay Area, right? Yeah, yeah, just in your This kind of, uh, you know, there's all these, uh, like, um, memberships now is kind of the thing with the, you know. The the clubs or the the whatever, right. um, And so, like, you know, the Rare Barrel has one. You get Rare Barrel. Well, Mm. well, maybe a membership actually allows you to get some beer delivered. we're doing a, we're doing a. A farm share at our brewery, a CSA, and so pick they up pick your, up on Tuesday. Pick up your beer. Pick up your your six. Oh We're changing God. the world right now, Teresa. My mm. head is exploding. <laughs> I'm super oh. excited about this. Idea. All it's right. Like, well, to bring you back down to earth, we will talk about this next beer in our glass, which is another uh, great beer of yours. This time, an oatmeal stout. So our first ale that we're having of yours today, right? Uh, yeah. Tell us about this beer. Uh, this one is, uh, let's see, probably 90% Thomas Fawcett malts. Uh, we've got our pearl backbone, uh, some chocolate, some dark crystal, uh, some oats, and I'm forgetting. Midnight <laughs> That's okay. Midnight wheat. Midnight wheat. Mm-hmm. Midnight wheat. Okay. One of my favorite grains. Really? Yeah. What's different about this? Like, is this flaked wheat? I don't, what's the difference here? Um... I, I believe it's just like a kiln uh, wheat. So it has a darker uh, SRM. It's a much, much darker SRM, but okay. uh, you don't get a, a whole lot of that astringency or sharpness mm-hmm. uh, to it. It's uh, But you, you get a little bit of mouthfeel. So it's kind of like just kind of like a smooth, dark chocolate, um, very okay. subtle uh, in flavor, uh, but does add a lot of color without adding a lot of astringency okay. uh, to it. You know what I've recently learned about this trinity, just like I learned about bitterness? Things I should have learned a long time ago. <laughs> it was that this it was Vinny teaching me on our show there that like there's nothing wrong with bitterness. I kept saying, Oh, I don't like bitter, I like flavor, or whatever. But we actually do like a firm bitterness, mm-hmm. like in your bow pills, right? Mm-hmm. And I also used to, when I was first learning to taste beers with Jamil, one of the first things I could pick up was astringency. So, and I would pick it up when it was really strong in a beer. So I, it, I, I started associating it with as a negative. But there's actually room for some astringency. Like you actually want a little bit of astringency. Like I think, like in this beer, mm-hmm. um, you don't want it to be cloying. You don't want it to ruin the beer. You don't want it to be the only thing. But that there's there are styles that actually call for a bit of astringency. And where it comes from matters also. I see. Not all astringency is equal. So at least like to me, what? like what? some is more harsh and aggressive and just off putting in general. But like there, are different different types of malts can contribute different levels and intensities. Okay. And some are a lot more of a supportive role, like this, versus just coming in over the top. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Some are supportive. Some are like Kim Shimke. Some are Beverly. Sure. Some are Kim. Some are, are, are right. Kim. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm gonna look. At, I just some are good. Some are Kim Shimke. That's, that's true. Yeah. 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 So there are good positive good ones. Good or great. And then there's and then there's other ones that aren't. Yeah. Yeah. 
who who can define astringent? I'm I just I'm picturing our listeners, some of them going like, well, what is this astringency you talk about? Anybody here can? I'm going to look so, it up. I think of it as like uh, like well, ashy is like the like astringency gone wild. Yeah. Know, like, okay. Like where you're you're tasting like. You had your mouth open by the campfire too long. Or, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a, there's a sour component to it as well, but a, not a good sour, but a bad sour. Or just yeah. like a harshness where it's kind of hurting your throat yeah. a little bit. And it can be kind of like uh, tannic textile. and dry grassy, too. Like yeah. it can be biting. I, I always mm-hmm. think of astringency as, as having to come from tannins, and tannins, I feel like, mm-hmm. coming from uh, it dries your mouth before it should be dried. Mm-hmm. It yeah. sort of sucks yeah. the moisture out. So that's how I always thought mm-hmm. of it, too. And now that now that you guys are talking about it, and I'm reading it, I feel like nobody should listen to me when I say that the sum amount of it is acceptable. But I just was reading through some styles and finding, like, oh, some of it's okay. The BJCP site has it uh, written as a beer fault, and they describe it as mouth puckering, lingering harshness, husk-like graininess. And I think it's the husk-like graininess sometimes that I'm talking about can be acceptable, as long as it doesn't go into any of the other puckering, drying out, drying your tongue, drying your, you know, which this beer doesn't do, by the way. No, no. Uh, it's maybe, maybe I'm just picking up on a bit of graininess that I'm calling astringent, mm-hmm. and I might not even be using the right word. Um, I kind of like that. I like that you're getting, you know, multiple things. We often talk about, you know, balance and drinkability and, and, and notes, multiple <laughs> notes. There's one note beers, there's two note beers, there's four note beers. Yeah. You know, there's, you get, there's complexity. It's complexity, ultimately. It right? is. This it, has a, a bit of a creamy oatmeal uh, complexity, it has a bit of chocolate in there, um, but. A bit of graininess, which I think to me, or bready might be a better word than than grainy. I don't know. That kind of helps round it out. It is complex, this one, too. Yeah. The, the pearl, malt, pearl malt is a floral malt. Okay. Uh, so you do kind of get a little bit more, uh, a two a little bit more in depth flavor, a little bit more bready, uh, doughy, not just, you know, you're just not getting raw sugar. You're adding flavor sure. uh, to the mix as well. What's the ABV on this? Your oatmeal stout? Uh, five. Two five four. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A low five ABV. Four. Five four. Oatmeal stout. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. I don't know. The ones I see commercially are like six percent. I'm not trying to drink that. And do you think that they go higher because people are adding so many other malts that they're adding a lot more fermentables that 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 maybe Paul's getting more flavor without adding fermentables? I don't know what it is. What do you think, Paul? Uh, I think you know. We all kind of fall into oh, dark beers are strong beers. So, which is a five percent oatmeal stout or five percent stout doesn't make sense. So, I might as well make it eight. I see. Uh, so it's but, not know, that they're trying to get color and adding sugar. It's not that they're trying to add chocolate flavor and adding sugar. They're just doing it. I think they're just doing it. They're okay. Just, yeah. My, my personal opinion. <laughs> I, JP likes your opinion. I can. I tell really him. do. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate it very much. Well, he's going to show it to you. Yeah. All of his all of his opinions are in a spreadsheet as well. I like that. <laughs> if I can enter a question and get an opinion back out. Yeah. Basically, I just need an AI. Yeah. <laughs> to Paul's tell me like what to the think. the Zelda machine or whatever it is, and like you just want to put in a quarter and get out your fortune. This, <laughs> here's the answer. Zelda this is your Paul. Yeah. Was what Zorba, was that motherfucker? Zorba, Zorba, Big, Zorba, Big, Zorba is Zorba. Zorba. Hey, Zorba the Great. Yeah. It's Zoltar. 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 Uh, Zelda. Whatever. <laughs> Zelda machine. He's, yeah. your, he's your scientific Zoltar. You just want to yeah. punch in a question and get out an answer. That's right. That's all you want. Link <laughs> over here. Yeah. Well, we have another beer, but before that, I wanted to talk some, uh, a little more about the community there in Richmond, because you guys started a, a series, at least on your blog. I don't know if there's a beer to coincide, but you have this uh, uh, Pride and Purpose yep. series that you started to highlight people in your community. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, we just, you know, I mean, it, we just have been very pleasantly surprised at the reception we've gotten in Richmond. Like I said, we, 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 we chose that place because we liked it, and we thought, oh, let's just, we'll have our production brewery there, we'll just do our thing with a little tap room, whatever, who knows. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not saying the tap room is a mob scene all the time. We do get more people than we thought. Great. Um, we have a good, you know, good set of regulars. We have tons of parties. People love parties, and we don't okay. charge. It's just like, hey, we'll save some tables for you, come to your birthday, your retirement, your engagement, your baby shower, whatever. Nice. A lot of that going on. Um. 
we also have partnered with a lot of nonprofits. There's tons of nonprofits in Richmond. When you start a brewery, you cannot believe, as far as you know, Teresa, like how many emails you get from people requesting. We do too here at the yeah, bar, yeah. Right. Which yeah. is great. It's, it's awesome. We can't always, you know, sometimes it's just we're supply constrained or resource, you know, man, human power constrained. But, yeah. um, we try the best we can to participate um, either by going out and pouring it events or having fundraisers at our tap room um we've had uh the mayor of, of richmond had his, his campaign kickoff at our tap room we had um uh, council members do their campaign kickoffs we had a council member forum before the election last year where we had all the candidates for city council come and you know so it was it, it's not only sort of you know fun and games but it was like there's some there's some civic sure. meaning, you know meaningfulness to this which really it really meant a lot to us um so as it should yeah it was, and it, that goes away a lot i experienced that here in concord and i didn't expect to I, right. I, I thought even concord was too big for that sort of thing and before i know it half the city council is in here yeah. even randomly on their own having a beer uh the mayor came and cut the ribbon uh the current mayor just came and did a uh, a meet and greet just to talk with people uh, she, it's called beer with the mayor and it's nice to see local, like to be able to interact with local government and local community, right? Yeah, you feel like you're playing a you know a little role in which something is that's the, bigger than just trying to run your business. Which is the opposite, at least in my experience, how I feel about the rest of the government, <laughs> right? Like I feel I, without going too far down, I just I I like it feels nice that I maybe have some input mm-hmm. and some role and some uh, input's not the right word. Uh, I I can facilitate some some exactly. community yeah, engagement. You're a catalyst. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go on. So anyway, so we've we've uh, in a couple of years we've been open. We've developed a lot of you know relationships, friendships with a, a whole bunch of different people, and we realized that, <clears throat> uh, as I said, we're really excited about the upside that Richmond has, mm-hmm. and we want to help again be a catalyst for that, push that along. And so we started this series called Pride and Purpose. Pride and Purpose is the motto of Richmond. Okay. Um, and so we we just have this big list of people and. Uh, organizations and individuals and food trucks and 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 all sorts of um, people and cr- artists, musicians, craftspeople that are that are doing their thing in Richmond, working hard, unsung, need mm-hmm. more attention brought to them. So, yeah. So yeah, we just write a little uh, a little piece on them. We put it on a blog. We you know we we promote it on social media. Sure. And we're trying to get a little bit of a you know a critical mass basically. Yeah. Uh, and people paying attention to to richmond and of to course richmond. you know it, it, i'd be lying if i say we weren't you know doing this for for our own you know, oh that's building okay our brand as well but we want to okay. be sort of the yeah you know the underwriters for that if you will yeah listen we're all capitalists here and that's just <laughs> fine and I, I think anyone who says that they don't get something out of this too uh it doesn't mean it's not altruistic yeah. so all right well if you want to go check that out you can go to eastbrotherbeer.com and click on the blog tab and then you'll find the the pride and purpose uh, there, um, I'm guessing we'll end up seeing some beers out of this later, some Pride and Purpose beer or something uh, coming through the pipeline. Somebody suggested that the other day, a Pride and a Purpose, you know, some sort of oh yeah complimentary thing. Yeah, so, yeah. It's I'm just going to say like no one's talked about Richmond in a long time, mm-hmm. so I think you have every reason to showcase some of the people that have have lived there, been there, uh, run businesses there when nobody gave a shit. Uh, you have all the reason to promote that. Yeah, for no other reason than economic forces, people are moving to Richmond. Yeah, uh, the yeah. artists are moving in, the musicians are moving in, the the young families are moving in. Yeah, uh, but there's also a very strong feeling. One of the one of the nonprofits we work with is Richmond Main Street. They're tasked with revitalizing downtown. Town, okay. which used to be a bustling hub when you look at this, you know, the pictures back in the forties and the fifties and sixties. Sure, um, but there's a there's a very strong movement to have gentrification happen in a way where there is minimal displacement. Maybe we can do this together. Yes. So that's why I stopped using. The, all right, not stopped. I didn't use that word. C- gentrification. I figured it was intentional. <laughs> Because I feel like Richmond, and, and I think Oakland is trying re- very hard at this, too, uh, that th- they're, they're trying to uh, have that experience w- with minimal displacement. Mm-hmm. And 
look, it's going to happen. Displacement, displacement happens, uh, and 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 as soon as things change, uh, for better or for worse, these things happen. But there are some communities that are more deliberate than others, and I feel like Richmond's one of them. Yeah. Richmond's very deliberate about trying to like, okay, how do we do this together? Well, I, mean, I think gentrification is fine if you're talking in a very negative light as far as tech companies coming in, like in the tenderloin or whatever, mm-hmm. and changing things for the the point of 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 catering to their needs over the needs of the people who who live there. Right. But you can also revitalize downtowns, and you can revitalize you can. certain sections of the mm-hmm. cities, and not necessarily be gentrifying. Yeah. I think that term. I think you're sort of right that it is kind of a, a negative term. It can yeah. You can you can revitalize and bring stuff that the community wants. Maybe it's a beer. Maybe it's maybe it's brewery because they need a catalyst. I think to help sort of wrap the community back up again and kind of involve everybody in what's happening. Yeah. And there's not a lot of places like that, especially places like, like Richmond that I understand have had a lot of economic hardships. Right. If you if you have a place for a community to gather and, and feel like they're part of the community, then that's that's revitalization. That's not gentrification. It is. Right. It, you're 100% right. The, the, Hell yeah, dude. The issue ends up becoming if there are, especially in places like the Bay Area, Los Angeles, New York, you name it, where it's very expensive to live, if you start to lose places that people can afford to live yeah. because you've revitalized, well, that's gentrification. Yeah. So if you find, if you can do your best to find a balance, do your best to prevent people from becoming displaced, then that's positive. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not, not a catchy. That's positive community growth. Mm-hmm. You you right. want to you want. By the way, uh, many of these communities want to be revitalized as well. Sure, the people want mm-hmm. jobs. They okay, want to sure. do something and a nicer place. But they to don't live. want. But they don't want their rent to double. Right. Yeah. And so uh, and this is a hard thing. Like I, I gotta pretend that I have an answer, and I'm, I'm sure you won't either. I, uh, but the answer is <laughs> more houses. Do you have a spreadsheet? Yeah, the answer is, is, more is, houses. Houses. Yeah, the answer not is my more. spreadsheet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I actually have a playing card deck, and I have. <laughs> oh. Different words on them, and then I use that to, there you go. to <laughs> all of my policies are based on the 52 card pickup mm. style. Is what oh, I interesting. It, yeah. I love that yeah, game. The, the, one of the cool things about Richmond, uh, the people are super, super proud of their history and where they've come, and you know, they're proud that they've you know endured these hardships mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. ever changing community. Uh, you know, we've done a couple of functions and We've met people that have been in the community for 40, 50, or almost their whole lives. And yeah. it's just really interesting to hear the stories. And I would be fascinated, you know, yeah. And it's, and, it, and it's cool. You know, I don't think you have many areas where there is so much civic pride of what you stand for and, and where you're going and what you're doing. So. Yeah. I've never had that. I'm proud for you guys. I've never been proud of where I come from. <laughs> yeah, neither have we. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Oakley's not that great. Well, I come from Livermore. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got another beer in our glass, and I'm getting to the bottom of it because it's, it's also very good. Uh, this one is your double IPA, right? Do I have that right? You got it. Tell us about this beer, Paul. Uh, so this is... Uh, Kind of a classic West Coast uh, double IPA, but with kind of a little bit of a wink to uh, some modern. Uh, I used the Zaka hops, I think, is the most modern hop I've used in the last couple of years. Okay. Um, is that one that we just smelled on the table, too? It was on the table. It was. When we yes. were just down at Firestone, he had put down a bunch of hops, and a Zaka was one of them. Yeah. Go on. I just want to point. It's unique. This yeah, hop. it's unique. It's um uh, when I first tasted it, it really reminded me of Citra, but it had a lot of tropical notes uh, to it. You know, Citra is like, you know, citrus on 110%. And, you know, this this had a little bit more depth mm-hmm. uh, to it. And then uh, I believe it was some Cascade hops just to, some, for some bitterness and some bal- balance and give it some of that old school dankness. Yep. And, uh you know, again, it's it's crystal clear. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> How dare you? Do you notice a theme? Yeah. <laughs> crystal clear, very dank in, yes. a, in, a, in a very good way. A little fruity. Um, drinks like a single IPA. You know, it's yeah. probably it's probably bittered a bit like a double IPA, but still drinks like a single IPA. Yeah. Personally, I think, I, you know, next iteration, maybe a little bit more body, but I'm really happy yeah, with with a beer, and you know we've been doing really well in the tap room. Do you just add simple it. sugar too to dry it out, or is it all malt? All malt, really? 
Yes. It's dry like one of those, you know, let's put a little, a little. what do you just, dextra and just throw dextrose. that in it. Dextrose, thank you. I always yeah. get that wrong. Does, throw some dextrose in there. No, not even no. that. Because you got down there. What was the, uh, what's your OG and FG? Uh, you can do it in Play-Doh, however you do it. I don't care. Uh, we were north of 20 Play-Doh uh, to begin with, and uh, it went down further than... I expected it did. So we that's had, why you're saying you might add we had body. A, we had to proof this a little bit, so hmm. that might have taken some of the body uh, out of it. But huh? yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Because you had already registered the. We did. We uh, it takes you about six weeks to get a label on a sure. can, and so you do that ahead. Uh, of so time. they want tasting notes, what the recipe is, and ABV. ABV often before I brew the beer, so it's uh, so you got to do some. Okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure you get that right. No one wants to get in trouble. Yeah. I don't know. I still think you kind of nailed it. Right? Thank it's you. Pretty good. Yeah, but isn't it? It's dry, like like. Like you add the it's sugar, like a, the simple sugar. Yeah, West mm-hmm. Coast style, I guess. Well, that's what he's saying. Yeah, light too, yeah. body. Yeah. Light, dry, crystal clear. So, again, just bit of tank time and then filter. Mm-hmm. Is it almost that clear, this one, when it comes out of the tank? Oh, no. This was... Uh, this one's cloudy. We, you know, we do it once a year, so we went heavy-handed on the dry hopping. Okay. Uh, and, you know, probably our lowest volume beer coming out of fermenter, but... Okay. Uh, do you have an idea how many pounds per barrel you're dry hopping? 100. <laughs> Four to five, closer to five. Four to five hundred pounds, pounds per pounds. barrel. <laughs> that's a that's a good chunk. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, if, if, if we're going to do this one on a regular basis, I'm going to have to rewrite a little, good yeah. chunk of the recipe. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we can or charge a whole lot more for it. Yeah, so, I understand. Yeah. Well, that's so, the fun thing about doing the one-off is you can just you can go a little crazy because you're not it's you're not going to have to replicate it and scale up and yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. We got offered a keg today. I don't. I, I couldn't say who it was if I if I wanted to because yeah. it's not my department. I just heard them talking about it, and when they talked about, it, I was like. Wait, they charged what? They want <laughs> they want what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, on principle. I don't care if that's how much it cost them to make that keg. On principle, we are not buying that keg. <laughs> and anyway, my staff had cost out what it would char- what we should charge, mm-hmm. and it was twenty four dollars a pint <laughs> and twelve what? and twelve dollars a tulip. For some, and I and I think it was I, somebody's IPA. I, I hope I, I don't think it was a sour. Oh, it wasn't I was it I was working, and uh, well, that I might have done. Right, uh, <laughs> I should have done. I yeah, was, right, and exactly. I, and I just heard it, and they had been talking about it for five minutes before it even registered in my ear. I was, I was like, did I just fucking hear that right? Did I ask? And they weren't going to buy it anyway. But I just absolutely not. I don't yeah. care how good it is. On principle, we are never. No, absolutely yeah, you not. Tell Vinny to go fuck it. <laughs> right. Yeah. We've had plenty of the elder wasn't. before. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely was plenty the triple. <laughs> I really don't remember who. I probably wouldn't say anyway, but I was like, oh no. I know you wouldn't. No. <laughs> yeah. I was like, off no. air, you're gonna tell me. No fucking way. No, I really I'll, I'll find out for you off air. Uh, yeah, please yeah. do. Because yeah. I, I want to know now too. Like That's yeah. rude. Listen, no, rude. I'm curious yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I respect y'all and I have talked to uh, a lot of our friends off the air and they tell me how expensive you know it can be to make beer like i get it sure but fuck you that's right <laughs> it's, that's ridiculous it's offensive and, and just fucking rude that's what i said i was like listen on principle i don't even care if people will line up at the door to buy that yeah. no i'm not encouraging that behavior well, if yeah. you're talking 24 dollar pint what is it 600 dollar keg yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's basically what we were maybe, looking at. Maybe but the maybe, brewer's getting a livable wage at that price. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> at that price, you'd better be driving Probably a Tesla. Not. Right. Yeah. Like, come on now. I think there's other ways for a brewer to get a, a livable wage. Yeah, like uh, work a second job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. On top of your 80-hour week. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's basically. really well yeah, I mean, scheduled. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Right. I go to work nine. I leave at five. I have lunch at twelve thirty yeah. to one. Sorry, this nothing nature. ever bad happens. Yeah. <laughs> Not, okay. Yeah. Well, well, wait. I spent sixteen hours here. That was yeah. totally scheduled. Oh, yeah. Shift uh, beers, bro. And I'm, I'm still sorry. not done. I, I, you know, uh, I'll, I'm sorry if I'm calling anybody out on this, but like. No, there are other ways to pay your brewer that way. And and people have different models of how, like, the distribution of profit goes. And so, sure. for example, I have said deliberately, probably to you guys too, but to my staff here at the Hop Grenade, like, 
you all will have like health care and not have to get another job and and several other things before I ever have like a house on fucking Maui, like a mansion on Maui, because you can decide how you distribute profit. Sure. You also, by the way, I'm not saying everybody's greedy. Early on, you have to decide how you structure your company. So if you structure your company with 18 investors who all expect to get paid 18% back or whatever the whatever shitty deal you made, well, then, yeah, your brewer's never going to make more than 50, yeah. 50K, 30K. I don't know what. That's just how it's go. So, in other words, there are decisions all along the way. Oh, yeah, and I don't think And it doesn't that... have much to do with the cost of a keg. Oh, yeah. Not, not once it goes from, not once it goes from a, a, a $200 double IPA to a $600 double IPA. Oh, right, because the sales staff has to get their cut, too, which is where a lot of that company goes. Company structure, company yeah, right, structure, yeah. company structure. Exactly. I'm just saying there's, I'm sorry, but. Sure, I, maybe I'm not the greediest owner in the world, and, and I'm, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, that's not the retailer's fault. <laughs> <laughs> There's people in between the retailer sure. and the person writing the check. Sure. And some decisions are in, in the business owner's control, and a lot of people get into, like, uh, not everybody is the expert business owner when they get into an industry, and then, right. you, get, then you get stuck into a corner. And so, right. right. Also, you know, some will want to drive a Porsche before the brewer gets paid a living wage. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, there oh, are right. things. Yeah. Like, I'm calling it out right now. You can just, it's on the air. So if I'm ever, you know, if I have a Ferrari and a fucking mansion on Maui before anyone's getting a living wage, call me out. Right. Is what I'm saying. Like, there are ways you can structure your company that that doesn't happen. Sure. I drive a 2008 Nissan Sentra. <laughs> <laughs> just for the record. I'm just right. thinking about calling you out to see if you'll let me stay at your place. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I'll, yeah. I'll be like, well, I'll share the bedroom. Fine. Now, call me out. I don't give a shit. You can have a spare room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because your mansion's on Kauai, not Maui. That's right. true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, you have two jobs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, I love it. I learned a lot from that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> Great. And uh, I, now I just want to yell at Warren because nobody writes checks anymore. It's all electronic. It Who is. writes checks? Sorry, that's Evo a waste of paper. What is checks? Idiot. I don't know why. No. I don't care about the environment. Use all the paper you want. I'm always like, send a check to somebody. And she's like, okay. And she right. fucking writes out a check. That's how my and bank like, account is so big right and now. And I'm like, the thing works. You just hit the button on the bank account and the website. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she writes it anyway. Yeah. She writes a post-it note to remind her to not write a check. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You guys are free to go or you can hang out because I'm going to take a break right now and we're going to come back and we're just going to dick around for another 10 minutes and finish the show, which you're welcome to do. But uh, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you that choice off air so you don't have to tell our listeners whether or not you you want to stick around with us. Um, (laughs) They'll uh, know if they're not here. uh, Actually, the police are on their way. Yeah, Uh, but we got to we got to wrap a few things up. I'm going to have another one of your beers, uh, which I've just really enjoyed. I think. Is there a bow pills that JP and I can arm we're wrestle have to for? Fight for it. We're no, all we're, three of us. Gonna, yeah. we're, I'm telling you, we're kiss fighting. I wasn't. I wasn't joking. Who I could hold your breath the longest? Yes, I was deadly serious. I'll go right back to the Vienna. I thought we're, we were, we're sticking put, around for that. By the way, you are <laughs> the kiss, kiss fights. fights? Yeah. <laughs> right. Look, it's, 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 it's there's no uh, strictly specul- spectation. You have to participate. I got to participate. That's right. Yeah. No, I'm spectating. I have a two year old. And I don't get out much, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sit on the back. Side and watch this go down. Yes. <laughs> I was looking because I thought we had another one of yours on tap, and either we drank it last week when you all were supposed to be here. I think we might. I think we tapped one of your kegs right before I canceled the show. So we might have. It was probably the fucking Bo Pills, <laughs> and we and it got drank probably, all week dude, long. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, we will take a break. Uh, I want to thank you both for for being on the program. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk Appreciate to you guys. Um, at JP. Yep. As of, let's see. Uh oh, I just, just a couple going. weeks ago, <laughs> the fifth of this month. The fifth of this month. Okay, we've officially been doing this program for fourteen years. Wow! And having you two in on the show and your wonderful beer today reminds me of why I still do it. Really fun to, to talk with you guys today and have great beer, and that it doesn't. It actually doesn't get old when we get to taste awesome stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. That means a lot. Thank you so, very much. Thank you thank guys you. for being here and making good beer. Now East Brother is on my map. It wasn't before. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with your marketing, but I didn't, 
I didn't realize. Fault. I didn't realize that you had amazing uh, beer. Whatever you do, don't hire Kim Shimke for it. But now I know. Uh, so, all right, go to eastbrotherbeer.com. Do I have that right? Eastbrotherbeer.com. Yeah, that's it. it. And you can look up there. Uh, they got a blog where you can learn about the um, the the pride, pride and purpose. Thank you, pride and purpose series. Uh, oh, there's a jobs link. I like that too. Maybe they'll be hiring soon. Uh, you can check out the tap room. All sorts of things. So go over to eastbrotherbeer.com and check it out. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm going to drink more of their beer, and we'll wrap up a few things. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Hi, this is Tyler from Libertine Brewing Company in the central coast of California. You're listening to Brewing Network, The Session. It sucks. Does it suck? It sucks. But that's what's good about it, is that it sucks, right? All right, welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with us today. East Brother Beer Company, still in the studio. They decided not to leave us. They got nothing else to do. That's right. <laughs> they're not talking, but they're still here. Well, we can't find the keys, so uh, you know, yeah. to the shackles. I lost the keys to the RV this week. I was supposed to drive Beardy down. Mm. Firestone on our date, a, on our date, on our uh, on our date weekend, yeah. our couples weekend getaway. So how did you get? How did you get that there? Must have took some I, the romance out. It did. Yeah. It took a little. Sleep. Yeah, it just. Uh, no, we took the RV. I, I found my spares somehow. No, okay, somehow yeah. I didn't even yeah. know I had those. I was getting my RV, uh, RV keys out just in case. Yeah. yeah. Well, that probably took forever. I, I know right where mine were. Yeah, but it yeah. still probably took forever because you're slow. Well, and I had to find them. <laughs> but you, never mind. I had I'm to pretty... see with the bowl. I had to find the bowl where they were in. I hate this conversation. So do I. Doesn't it drive you nuts when you lose? Like, I'm pretty good. At, like, at my age, I was bad enough at that for years. Yeah. Like, where you lose your wallet and your keys Dude, and, like, your important yes. But now... Everything in its right place. Like right. I'm really a little anal about it. Like my really? stuff just goes where it goes. And so when it happens, I'm more perturbed than I ever was before. For sure. And I, I, Taryn does that shit all the time. Her keys are everywhere, and she never can I find. I don't understand them. And it's that. Like I know where your keys are, and I never use them. <laughs> so how do you not and you just put them on the thing where the th- this is where the wallets go? This is where the keys go. This is where they go. Yeah. And then when I can't find my keys. Then I feel like a bigger asshole. <laughs> that you've said anything about it? Yeah, yeah, so I never really make a big deal out of it or even ask right. her if she's seen them because I don't want to be like, oh, so it doesn't feel good. Everyone loses their keys and it's fine. See, But it's not every day. Well, and, then I, yeah. and then I scream it, at her. It just bothers me more. I yeah. still don't know where they are, and they only ever go in two places. That's it. Actually, they only, really one, but and then there's a back. There's like one other yeah. place. The ignition Not there. or your pocket. So then I'm like, you're at the point where I'm like, well, they got stolen. Somebody stole them, <laughs> which well, clearly mm-hmm. didn't happen. Why would? But they? I can't find any other reason. I don't know. I'm a little anal about this stuff. And yep. so it was very. There's a big I didn't black like, market for RV keys. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm like. So the exact. So this is where my head goes, and then I'm like, Justin, you're a fucking idiot. Like, really? Who, who wants your keys? Right. They don't know where they go. Your that's RV true. is yeah. parked eight miles away in a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you could leave it unlocked, and no one's going to take it. You can leave it running, and no one's going to take <laughs> right. it. Which is what I thought happened. Minutes. Which is actually what I thought happened. because it was the keys were in any of the places I could think of. I was like, well, it's at the RV. Yeah, that would make sense to me. And then no one wants to take the fucking thing, right. so I'm like, the RV's still there, and the keys are in it. Bring it back to you. <laughs> no keys. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, but no right, thanks. Yeah. Matt wanted the tour. Matt uh, from Firestone wanted the tour of the RV this week. I was, like, I was like, no, you don't. You don't want <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm really embarrassed. You don't want to see this. He comes in, and he sees our 12-pack from the night before, since we stayed up till 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. And he was like, oh, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He let his kids in there, though, so he wasn't worried about tetanus or anything. Well, hey, man, the penicillin is uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh. Well, I wanted to do a little bit of beer news today. Oh, geez. Uh, Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Bit of a feel-good story from Germany. I like to, I like that. <laughs> Uh, according to the Hill, uh, German residents in a small town bought all the beer in town to keep it away from a far-right neo-Nazi group that was having a concert there. What? R- <laughs> residents of Ostritz, Germany, bought up hundreds of crates of beer to keep it out of the hands of neo-Nazis that were descending on the town for a music festival. Um, this, I guess, was according to the BBC. Uh, a Dresden court had imposed a ban on the sale of the position of alcohol at the uh, Shield and Sword Festival. <laughs> Which doesn't sound <laughs> wow. far right or neo-Nazi enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. The Shield and Sword yeah. Festival. The, C- the Shield and Sword and completely 
completely white and no Jew festival. That's, yes. This is what it's called. It was. Uh, so when the Dresden court imposed that ban, police went into um, into the, the venue and confiscated more than a thousand gallons of beer on Friday and Saturday. So suspecting that the festival attendees would then seek to buy alcohol at the local supermarkets instead, town residents reportedly went out and bought more than 200 crates of beer. The plan was devised a week in advance. Um, George Saldit said that we wanted to dry the Nazis out. We thought if an alcohol, alcohol ban is coming, we'll empty the shelves at the supermarket. Um, for us, it's important to send the message from Ostrich that there are people here who won't tolerate this, who say we have different values here and that we're setting an example which is not the image of a far-right concert which dominates the media coverage. Um, and by the way, they, it's not just far-right. They were, they were neo-Nazis, according yeah. to this article. Yeah. Um, the court had ruled that the festival had an obviously martial and aggressive character, and the presence of alcohol was likely to exacerbate the risk of violence. Good call. Um, But it does. (laughs) And so even about 1,400 police officers were deployed uh, at the event. Uh, They said there were some minor incidents. But I thought that was pretty cool that the town was like, oh, yeah? Well, we're going a step further. You will not be able to buy a single bottle of beer at the grocery store. Bring it all over here. That's some bringing community together, right, Rob? How much beer is in a crate? Uh, I I think they're 24 (laughs) there. I'm trying to remember. Because, like, like the milk crate, I think, is what it is. Well, yeah, and you know what? They're Delivery. You know why they call them crates there? You you do actually deliver your empty bottles back to the supermarket in Germany mm-hmm. to buy your new bottles. And like a milk like a milk crate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of thing. Or be charged. And I, I think a, I remember a, quate, a crate is, is 20, 24 out there. That's I'm not true. sure. Um, anyhow, I just read that today and I thought. 24 was, metric bottles. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Pints, really. Yeah, like, it's a lot more Five than even Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. 500 mil. 500 mil. 5 mil bottles, uh, can you make? 24 5 mil bottles. Oh, right. Right. Oh, I had to hand oh, fill oh, all of these bottles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> How big is your system? It's a hundred mils. That's what they should. They should have given the neo Nazis five mil bottles. Yeah, That's true. you can have your beer. That's true. In a five mil bottles. You know, yeah. we should have sent them that that Lagunitas hop water. Have you, have you guys seen that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's Which a, version? I have the drink. Yeah. 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 Actually, the mellow version. Really, the mellowing oh. version. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I tried the, this. The hop I'm driving water. version. Mm-hmm. I've been looking mm-hmm. for it because uh, I just really mm-hmm. like laughing at Lagunitas, and uh, that f- would help. A friend of mine uh, uh, brought me a couple, yeah. and when I first tried it, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. It's like a it's okay. a sparkling water. Yeah, it's not bitter, but it has some uh, fruity hop character. Okay, I thought it was really good. Right. And then I I drank a bunch that night, and I was hung over the next day, and I I was like, oh, sparkling water sounds really good right now. Uh-oh. And I oh. opened it for that. Not good. Not good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because it has enough beery qualities that if you're looking to be refreshed when you're hungover, yeah, that's not, not it. Not it. Huh. Yeah. Nope. But sober as like a sparkling water alternative, yeah. it was it was all right. Okay. Well, it's better than a soda at a brewery, you know. For like, sure. Yeah. Like so, like I save all my calories for beer. I never drink soda. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah. that kind of beverage. It's compelling because it tastes. It has a lot of flavor, but it doesn't have a lot. Of you you've had it too. Beer. Oh yeah, I made it actually. Oh, so is your experience the same as mine? Like I thought it was kind of good, and refreshing. Well, I didn't drink it hungover. So <laughs> well, I, I'm yeah. when you had it sober, experience. you thought it was. Oh yeah, yeah. I, oh, I think it's it's awesome. Yeah. Wait, yeah, you're talking about. The THC infused. Huh? No, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't oh. touch that shit. Well, right. That's why I was curious. I thought you were saying you liked. No, it in I can't that. do the weed. No, oh, okay, it makes okay. me all weird and paranoid and weird. Okay, so they do just yeah. a, an untainted hop water. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. you guys would sure fail the newlywed There's hop game. Hop water. Yeah. So they have hop water and high fi hops. Oh, okay. Hop water I've is seen the high five, high five hops. Yeah. Then. Okay. Is and is that THC or CBD? It is THC, THC infused. CBD. Yeah. Oh yeah. If I had chucked that, I'd have, I'd still be in a corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Don't talk to me. I'm sorry for everything I did. <laughs> Sounds like we're like the same kind of stoner. Oh, it's terrible. Sure. I mean, I used to be Fun a at stoner, stoner, stoner. But then once I quit and tried to go back. It's never worked. Mm-hmm. Well, it was mm. ten times as strong when you went back. Right? I mean, yes, I was smoking, <laughs> but yes, Mexican there's that. Bammer weed. <laughs> but just, I mean, and this brown is a really good color brown. I love it. <laughs> right, fresh. It's crunchy. <laughs> and everyone's always like, "Oh, you just got to practice more. You got to try more," which is probably true. Like when I was first a stoner, I had to get 
past being a stoner before I could be a stoner, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a functioning yeah. stoner. Yeah, your power level needed to be higher than that. <laughs> but I yeah. can't. I just can't handle it. It's so. I always, oh, I always thought it was weird. Where like you, you have to. You know, they say break your tolerance, or you have yeah. to. You have to basically poison your body enough so your body stops rejecting it. Right. Yeah, and then and yes. then it's cool, and then it's fine. I, maybe that's maybe that's a sign that's that you probably problem. shouldn't be doing. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll stick to the heroin. It's fine. Yeah. Mm. At least that mm. doesn't Black have a, a weird reaction. <laughs> All right. We did have a Twitter game today, one that I really liked. What oh. was our Twitter game, uh, well, JP? Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, it was uh, Lately, we've been getting into body enhancements. We've been thinking about going uh, and getting bicep implants in Bulgaria or going to Argentina and getting elf ears. Where should we go next, and what should we get done? Okay. How did, how did we do, what's your overall impression? How did, how did they do? I think we did pretty good. Mm. I, I think we did. Uh, I think we did pretty good. I, I, I appreciate some of the comments. Some of the comments were uh, very funny. Okay, and some were um, slightly less funny. Okay, in a weird way. All right, as usual. So Rob and Paul brought us some swag to give away from East Brother Beer, which Bebo it. will be sure to send eventually, <laughs> depending who you ask. Whoever uh, wins today. So yeah, I, I mean, good luck getting it. From what I hear, <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't know. Sounds like this is, was a Sam. This is what Sam said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She doesn't give me anything. Good and luck I, getting yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I equated that with, of course, the Twitter game. The Twitter game. Yeah, because we're not sexist, mm-hmm. right? It's or true. dinner. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Good luck getting it. Are you ready? It's our new motto, by the way. I'm going to put out a BN shirt today. <laughs> Good luck getting Good it. Luck getting we are moving our store to like more than like one of those on-demand things. So yeah. now when we come up with stupid ideas like this, I can actually put a good luck getting it. Show yeah. <laughs> That's the way to go. Yeah. Man. Good luck getting it. All right. What do we got? All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow we could hear Bev from Turn the on sound your right. Right. Brute. Yeah. Sound poof. Brute. <laughs> sound poof. Brute. Brute. No, I didn't want. Any, I, I, that was that, that rude was just for me. But it was loud mm. enough that it went through. Because yeah. it was, well, it was the hella rude. Open. <laughs> yeah. I oh, opened my door so I could hear the Twitter game. I yeah, see. Oh, right, right, right. She have no yeah. Or, you, uh, anyway. Uh, okay, John McConnell says uh, we should go to Disneyland to get Mickey Mouse ears. Okay. And I just imagine like actual Mickey Mouse, oh, like permanently? physical ears sewn into my scalp. and I, Which I, you would I, do. I it was yeah. funny. Uh, Mike says, Mexico for an Elvis wig to complete a Tiki Lounge outfit. Okay. Uh, which I thought was really A lot weird. of JP inside Actually, yeah, gonna, yeah. Did you put Mike this out, out on the, did you put this out on uh, our Twitter feed <laughs> or Twitter. ears up uh, Twitter feed? Oh, fuck. Shit, you were uh, logged into the wrong one. Oh, dude. <laughs> Damn it. Well, we'll just keep going and pretend I did it right. Oh um, Shit, look at it. Here. Why, why what is I, happening? Why don't I just turn it upside yeah. down on him? Yeah. yeah. The queen of the Dutch tilt. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's fine. Cameras are hard. Yeah. It's all right. Don't worry She's new to it. Instagram. That's true. Yeah. 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 I'm just going yeah. to put it results. down on your belly. Maybe that's how you get 50,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like, figure this out. Like a little to the right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Ed, the lighting is such hush. Uh, Philip uh, writes in, says, America for hop tits. Oh, my God. Go to America for hop tits. Yeah. Which is what we are all already have, basically. basically. Right, yeah. But I just, I imagine like, like, cone, like hop cones. Oh, Oh, like, like I, I see. That's well, what I imagine. If we're gonna get know. them sculpted, we might as well get them sculpted how we want. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, like uh, I thought we were just talking about my flabby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, like you know, like Willamette or whatever. The the like there's like longer cone hops. Oh, just, like, uh, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Did you go for the Willamette or the, <laughs> or the, or the tight citrus? Yeah, I'm more of an Idaho seven. Okay, <laughs> seven inch nip. No, um, okay. Tyler uh, writes in and says, uh, "What does he say?" He says, in Chechnya, anything is enhancement. Having whole body is blessing. This is true. In Chechnya, mm. we're lucky to have limb. <laughs> <laughs> we share one. Uh, Sam Williams says, uh, JP should go to Africa for a skin transplant, and then he'll be able to wear any shirt that he likes. <laughs> 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 Which I thought was pretty funny. Winner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, first of all, East Brother is horrified that they stayed yeah, they're like, oh. yeah, they're like, uh, But just a little backstory. JP wore a shirt he did not know was racist. It was we, it's not racist. It was it was determined racist. was probably racist, racist although it innocent. Was, it, was, he wore it. it was mistakenly 
potentially racist. Still, we do not have to finish this game because that. Yeah. One. <laughs> but unless, unless there's a better yeah, one, there's only three more, four more left. That was a good All one. Right, yeah. Hang on, I'm still writing this one down. <laughs> <laughs> JP Africa win. Got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> William uh, says, "I hear prices and selection. Martinez are both great, and they're running a special on hobo livers." Hobo livers. That, that could be mm, good. That's an old school listener right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, Lloyd says Bangkok, and I'm not exactly sure where you should go <laughs> in Bangkok, but we should just go to Bangkok go. and get whatever happened. I'm not going to put that one down. Okay. Uh, Patty's House and Ales and Lager says Philly for Johns. Okay. We'll get her Johns in mm-hmm. Philly. Philly for Johns. And then uh, last but not least, Joshua says, I hear the morgue is having a sale on parts. Justin could swap out his dying feet for dead ones and just get it over with already. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's my that's my number two right it's there. Pretty deep. Yeah. So, uh, you by know. the way, my feet aren't dying anymore. <laughs> what? I started. Wait, so out. they're dead. They're, no, yeah. the B twelve worked. Oh, so. fine. I should have gone. I I did that once, but I went B thirteen. That went one better than you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and now you have larger feet. That's true. <laughs> and a sixth toe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my feet are very powerful. I mean, there's really no question of the winner. Right? Yeah. Like, JP has <laughs> to get a transplant <laughs> so that he right. can wear whatever he wants. Yeah, sure. There you go. All right. Great. Yeah. I love it. I love I love doing that. Right. I love being a part Take of it. Take Terrence with you, and he can get a transplant <laughs> at, for, for the person he really is on the inside. Uh, Let's be honest. Uh, you guys yeah. can swap. That's yeah. true. I think you we should do that. swap. Ooh, that's like a horror movie. Skin yeah. Swap. The skin swap. <laughs> Oh, it was Didn't a real, do it? That was a real <laughs> movie. Is it? Yeah, wasn't it a real movie? It was like it, it was uh, Nick Cage and uh, oh, Face Off. No, that's Face, face Off. off. Yeah. It, it faces yeah. skin, <laughs> but it was faces skin. Okay, that was the mainstream version. There's another. <laughs> there is. It, it's like in the '80s, where like the, I think it was C. Thomas Howell was in blackface, and there was a black guy in whiteface. Wasn't there like a no, thing? No, that's far, that's out of my wheelhouse. Did I, I just know. make that up? I was just thinking Silence of the Lambs. Didn't he wear a skin suit in Silence of the Lambs? He did. Yeah. Thank you. That's a, I was thinking that version. Yeah. Right. But that, yeah. That wouldn't produce the correct effects True. that JP's looking for. You're and, right. There was many. also and I'm the Wayans brothers did white chicks. There was a skin suit <laughs> in Men in Black too. Soul Man. But it wasn't oh. uh, but it wasn't that okay, uh, that's a low key racist movie right there. For, well he takes tanning what? pills. First I of all, remember this <laughs> movie. Of tanning pills. I remember this movie well. If there were I would that take is, them. <laughs> that is that Essentially promoted wearing blackface that movie. Let's uh, well, just, yeah, for sure. It was not a, yeah, okay. It's a blackface movie. It was but my it was dad's in 1986. Favorite, sure. So you yeah, know, the eighties were a remarkably unenlightened time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and was, I've when never you think about it. I've never even thought about that until just now. And but now think because I did watch a movie, and at the time I was like, oh, that's funny. And now I'm going, what the what? fuck? <laughs> that is not okay. It, yeah. it, we had to go through that to know. Okay, we went too far. Right. <laughs> right. Every every uh, everything needs a high water mark. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Self realization. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we'll all get there one day. <laughs> Why okay. is Bev laughing? In yeah, the- my yeah. microphone went limp, no. and there was a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought wow. you did that yourself. No, it just fell on me. Oh, uh, I hate it when that happens. All right, are we done? Sure, dude. We are done. We're going to go uh, drink some more beer and hang out and have some dinner. I want to thank once again our, our friends from uh, East Brother Beer, Paul and Rob. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for bringing all the good beer. I got another full Vienna in my glass. We're going to have to go get more of that uh, Bo Pills, JP. Yeah, we are. Maybe just have a little stash for you in the corner, a little That'd cooler nice. of Bo Pills Man, for when you start bitching about I would the... really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I really would. Just like a look at the tap list and reach in my cooler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, maybe you and I should make a trek out to East Brother, a little a tap list uh, made for you, I feel like. I think uh, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Go to eastbrotherbeer.com. You can learn more about them. We are off next week because we will be at Homebrew Con. Yeah, you will, dude. <laughs> Don't forget, you can still buy your tickets to BNA14 and HomebrewCon. Go to thebrewingnetwork.com and purchase your tickets now. The the beer list is stellar. I'm hoping to have it done for you uh, by, excuse me, tomorrow. Um, there's some good stuff on there. It's fun. Uh, plus, should I just give away the musical guest? Yeah, I probably should. It's going to get out it. anyway. Yeah. I invited back the School of Rock kids. Oh, there you go. You remember the School they of Rock kids? They were bad. I remember when they were performing, I remember literally looking around at the crowd because I'm like, who's going to care? 
Everybody, everybody was watching these kids just shred. And, and me, it was you, amazing. and Nate were going wild. Like, yes. They were just awesome. We so, loved it. School of Rock is a real yeah. thing, and they teach these kids how to play rock, and they're so talented, they're and they end badass. up with like a performance band. Yeah. So there is one, there is a School of Rock in Providence, and nice. I found out, and I invited them to come do a performance as well. So That's cool. Not only are we giving away a more beer, uh, the Brewing Network more beer uh, sculpture, but there's the School of Rock kids are going to are going to be partying it's all you can drink from i think we're going to have 20 different beers there wow. and um it's a it's going to be a lot of fun and you can hang out with me and bevo bevo's my wingman for the week <laughs> <laughs> poor girl this is going to be a weird yeah. Home con. wingman until about eight o'clock <laughs> right i know <laughs> just give her I have some to go scotch to bed now justin <laughs> i'd be like what am i gonna? you're lucky chris white's there for the week so i got yeah, thank other, god yeah. you're lucky i got my other wingman. <laughs> yeah uh all right so am i lucky or are you not lucky. <laughs> I don't know. Both. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, it'll be like the first homebrew con that I go to bed early too because I don't I don't have you a don't crew. Have anybody, yeah. Uh, Chris White, I'm sure will oh, yeah. be my crew. Yeah. Well he is older now. Yeah. I don't know. I can't keep up with him. No. Or Doc or I feel like I'm the old one. Well, I mean, Again, not true, not incorrect. I'm gonna have Paul write me a spreadsheet for <laughs> how I should exist through the week. Like <laughs> program, I mean, you. yeah. Can you program me, please, Paul? Okay. Like, go to bed by this time. <laughs> Here's how you you can drink this much in this hour, and it's noon somewhere. I feel like you're already. It's already in Paul's head. He's like, no, I got you. Yeah. I have this mm-hmm. spreadsheet. Yeah, just give me a workout of your metabolism <laughs> and your genetic, uh, you know, DNA. And He's already we'll, figured uh, that out. Yeah, oh, He's got AI for that. Damn, bro. He was in uh, Silicon Valley for years. Oh man, yeah, not the show. The place. Oh, okay. You don't have too many milestones left, Justin. So his <laughs> spreadsheet's not very big. The only milestone you have, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Same price. Like this is easy. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. You're 42. Uh, here, I'm, Justin, am I 42? Justin, you're 41. I you're, am. Yeah. Oh shit. You're transitioning from milestones to uh, kidney stones. <laughs> <laughs> Although the level of Head beer stones. he's drinking, yeah. that might help. Does it? Okay. Is beer? this the one good thing about my beer consumption? Yeah. I think beer uh, helps fight. Kidney stones. That's wow. Fine. Let's You're find out if beer me. help fights kidney stones. Are you going to Google this real quick? No, specifically beer. Where did you hear this? On the interweb? I read it on some clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I always say, when uh, internet knowledge matches my lifestyle choices, I'm <laughs> down with it. Yeah. On top, yeah. Um, Anything to fit Yeah, in? I mean, potentially, maybe. Um, but <laughs> apparently... <laughs> okay. It, it makes you pee, Because I drunk, said it's potentially, maybe. Yeah. So it's right. right. <laughs> Actually, it hurts like hell, but you don't yeah. remember the next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're just going to blame the cheap beer, yeah. Okay, beer doesn't necessarily directly cause kidney stones, but it can increase the likelihood a person will develop kidney stones. Oh, uh, well, And this can okay, happen in now. multiple different ways. Stop <laughs> now. Oh, so I had it backwards. Uh, because de- yeah. because dehydration oh. can uh, cause kidney stones. Apparently, it's one of the largest reasons kidney stones form. Yeah, drink more water. Uh, drinking excessively, particularly beer, also means you're getting a lot of empty calories, and that can cause weight gain. So the opposite <laughs> of what beer do Yeah. Oh, now you're going to start listening to me? <laughs> well, well, yeah, you know I have selective hearing. It sounded like something I wanted to hear. I, and you would have felt better about it had okay. we just not looked uh, it JP, up. I would, I would have drank more. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just taking my medicine. Right. Yeah. All right, everybody. Glug, uh, glug, glug. We'll see you back here in a couple of weeks, and yep. I hope to see you at HomebrewCon. And uh, JP, take us away, will you? Yep. Just call me Calgo. Thank you to our show sponsor, More Beer. It. You can get absolutely everything you need to make great beer at home by going to morebeer.com. The boys from East Brother Beer Company from Richmond, California, came in with some very good lagers for us to fawn over, and we love them for that. Check them out at eastbrotherbeer.com. Head over to etsy.com slash ears and buy some of my Disneyland themed t-shirts and help me afford therapy for my kid in the next 10 years. Get on Twitter for some good beer insight and homebrew info. Follow Nate Smith at Nathan Homebrew, Mike McDowell at TC McD. Warren is stuck over at another beer, uh, another beardy, excuse me. And our newest broadcaster, Teresa, is online at Sooty Brews. What is it? P S U T Y Brews and Crooked Lane Brewing. JP knows Twitter is dead, of course, so he's on Instagram at Major Jip, and you can find Bevo there as well at Beverly M Moore. Be sure to find the Brewing Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Justin's in my sky and winning the race. JP does great as his cherry.